It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Philip Elmer DeWitt is here. He's out for WWDC. Mike Elgin visits from Fez, Morocco. It's the middle of the night, and they're eating because it's, it's Ramadan. And Phil Libin, formerly of Evernote, he'll announce his new company. We'll talk about what to expect, WWDC, lots of rumors. But can Apple really compete against Amazon's Echo and the Google Home? We'll find out next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit This Week in Tech, episode 617, recorded Sunday, June 4th, 2017. Ask for the camel with two humps. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Stamps.com. Start using your time more effectively with Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. To get my special offer, go to Stamps.com, click the microphone, and enter Twit. And by Carbonite. Keep your business safe this year. Protect your business from ransomware and hacker attacks with automatic cloud backup from Carbonite. Try it free at Carbonite.com. And don't forget to use the offer code TWIT for two free bonus months if you decide to buy. And buy Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash TWIT and using the promo code TWIT. And buy Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, Right now, you can get $5 off one of their shave sets, including the limited edition Father's Day set, when you go to harrys.com slash twit. Time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show where we cover the week's tech news. We've got a very uh, prestigious panel, a very dignified... I feel like uh, I'm, I'm sitting amongst my, uh, my betters. Philip Elmer DeWitt is here. First time in studio. That's true. Philip, uh, legendary uh, Mac journalist for years. We were at Fortune and now runs PED 3.0. I shouldn't say the point because that'll add an extra dot. 3.0.com. Apple 3.0. Apple 3.0. But it is PED 30.com. Correct. Com. Correct. And you're in normally you're, you live in New England, right? Yeah, in uh, the Connecticut River Valley. Nice. That's beautiful there. Yeah. Different. It's farmland like here. Yeah. But this, we don't have sh uh, hills shaped like buttocks. <laughs> are you are you implying that our hills are shaped like they buttocks? They are. They're, they're almost badunka dunk. <laughs> <laughs> we got the badunka dunk of Petaluma, ladies and gentlemen. That's good. See, it takes a new, a fresh eye for me to really appreciate my own hometown. Uh, well, you're out here for WWDC. We'll that's, talk about right. that in just a second. But let me introduce the rest of the panel. Phil Libin is also here, famed as a founder and CEO of Evernote. And the last time you were here, you were a VC, but it looks like you started a new company. I did. I, we are launching a new company tomorrow. It's our first day of uh, being a CEO again. So Wow. Congratulations. Tomorrow. 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 Today's Sunday, right? Yeah, tomorrow. You shed 80 pounds Today. and you gained a company. I did. <laughs> I want to ask you how you lost. You look so good. Thank you. You do too. Uh, thank you. You <laughs> lost 80 pounds by fasting. Yes. It turns out when you stop eating, you lose weight. It's a re remarkable it's amazing. <laughs> revelation. It's amazing. Uh, All Turtles, we'll talk about that in a little bit, is your new company. It is a, a, an AI startup studio. I don't even, I think this is a language I don't even understand anymore, but we will uh, talk about that in a bit. But first, let me also say hello. All the way from Morocco, it's Mike Elgin. You need a Morocco. I'm, you need I'm a, on a rooftop. You yeah. need a fez if you're going to be in fez. Do they wear fezes in fez? Are you sitting down, Leo? I don't want to break this to you, but I guess I have to. Almost nobody wears a fez in fez. <laughs> they they mostly wear American baseball hats. Yeah, caps. Yeah, a fez is kind of our. I don't know why, for some strange reason, yeah. our trademark. We all have twit fezes. I guess it's the last bastion of fezes. First, Ataturk kicks the fez out of Turkey, and now Morocco has gone baseball caps. We're going to keep the fez alive here. And, <laughs> and this is part of your nomadic lifestyle. I know you're going to have a gastro-nomad experience here uh, next, early next year, right? We are. Uh, we haven't finalized the date. We're, we decided to do Barcelona first, then the Prosecco growing area of Italy. <sighs> 
and probably Mexico City. Oh. But we went to Italy to check it out, and man, that part of the world is absolutely stunning. But the first one's in Barcelona in September. Can't wait. Gastronomia. Yeah, really uh, excited uh, about it. We should also mention that it is Ramadan. And uh, and yes. that is a very uh, important all month long festival, of course, in uh, your part of the world yes. as well as here. And because uh, yeah. Ramadan, you fa speaking of fasting, it's a you festival. Fast, you fast all day. And yeah. No water, no food, but that means feasting and parties at night. And because you're on the roof, uh, you're surrounded by parties. Mostly, it sounds like kids. That's oh, right. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I mean, people really celebrate it here. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we can hear the kids. That's weird. nobody. Nobody loses any weight because they do. They really feast, and um, it, it's really a lot of fun. We've actually broken the fast at around 7:30 p.m. The big cannon that goes off. You hear the call to prayer, and then you hear this <laughs> big cannon, and then everybody can wow. uh, feast, and they all sit around the family together. So we we did that with a couple of families, and the food is delicious. Everybody's very happy. And um, and then they stay pretty much stay up most of the night. Uh, they eat three squares during the night, and they oh. have to be finished eating three thirty in the morning, and then there's no food from like three thirty to like seven thirty. Oh, that's hardly a fast. Well, it is a fast. It's just a. It's not a, lo a weight loss fast. It's, it's just a. It's, it's a religious fast. It's food. You know, shifting. it's interesting Nobody's when I started reading yeah, about yeah. fasting because it was you, by the way, who triggered this all, Phil. And then I talked to Kevin Rose, and he made a fasting app, and on and on and on. It seems like all my friends were doing this new thing, which is intermittent fasting. It's not fasting for extremely lengthy periods of time. It's it's briefer fast. How long do you fast, though? I shouldn't say that. Um, two to eight days. Yeah. Like, so, Eight's yeah. a lot. I'm, I, 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 two is plenty for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's more for health and weight loss. Ramadan is more, it's a religious fast. But every it seems every major religion actually has a fasting tradition of some kind. Yeah, it uh, yep. goes back a long way, and it's kind of fun. Yeah. I actually have enjoyed it. But anyway, we'll talk about that some other time because this is twit and we're supposed to talk about tech and it looks like tomorrow's a big day. The Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple's uh, yearly event. They haven't had a public event since September, eight months, right? Something like that. Right. My it's wife calls it WWD40. <laughs> well, it is the squeaky developer that gets the <laughs> grease or something. Um, I... I think I'm of two minds. First of all, there have been very few leaks about WWDC this it's year. It's a weird, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's because uh, what's his name who went to Bloomberg, um, uh, Mark Gurman's Mark, still getting the leaks. Yeah, but they're not. He there was one WWD where he just had everything. He knew it all. Yeah, and um, I think well, so that's the two minds. One is he does know it all, and there's nothing. He's there's new laptops, maybe a Siri device, iOS 11. Mac OS, we've decided it's going to be Catalina, by the way. Okay. I just thought I'd All say right. that. Uh, and then <clears throat> there's not much else to say. Or no. Apple could announce augmented reality and clear phones and a new iPad. Yeah. I and mean, it's just nobody knows. No. Nobody knows. Um, I think uh, he's leaked probably the, the biggest thing is probably going to be the Siri speaker, whatever yeah. they call it. Um, yeah. And it's that, hard to get excited about. Uh, productizing Siri, which is such a laggard. Well, that's first they have to fix Siri, and I think that's supposedly one They've of the things... They've been fixing Siri since they bought it. I know, I know. It's not going to get it's, any better. It's embarrassing. <laughs> there, there, uh, someone did a study, came out last week, and uh, they rated... It was like 5,000 queries, and who did... Did you see that? Did you yeah, cover this already? Yeah, yeah. And Siri led in just completely wrong answers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I swear at Siri more than I do anything else. I, in fact, it's a joke, running joke with Lisa and me. My wife will, for some reason, has this <laughs> undying faith in Siri. She'll ask Siri stuff, and I'll just go, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I gave up on that. No, so, <laughs> you know, I have Alexa and Google Home. I'm trying to get them to talk to each other, but it doesn't work yet. But... You know, you throw different kinds of questions. You they're, know? They're, they're, their domains differ, but they're right. basically roughly equivalent. Cortana is the next one down, maybe. I've never used that. Is that good? Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's better than Siri. Yeah, well, that's not, not saying, saying much. much. Yeah. Um, why, and you're into AI, Phil. Why is this so hard? What is Apple doing wrong? Why can't Apple create a product that uh, at least competes with Alexa? I mean, I think a lot of what they do in Siri is pretty impressive. Uh, it's just a more diffuse use case. Uh, you know, Alexa has... Uh, specific interactions and use cases that it's really good at. Uh, it isn't really trying to be a general purpose assistant, and I think Siri tries to be a little bit more general purpose. It's, it's a lot easier to say, oh, I could play music for you, I can do a 
kitchen timer. I can have yeah. these domains that I can work it's like in. I I miss Alexa like when I'm traveling and I do Alexa's too. not around. Like I kind of I get lonely. miss it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, my theory about Alexa is that. Let's What's, call her, by the way. Let's do this. Uh, everybody at home a favor and okay, call her Echo. Okay, Only, Echo. I started it, and I apologize uh, because it really is uh, going to trigger people. Well, I, what really impresses people about Echo is that it understands you so frequently. And I always assume that that's because it has a plug in the wall. So it can power seven right. microphones. Right. And that's that's where the strength of its uh, Well, if that's the case, then an, an Apple Siri device that is plugged in they should has be able array to do mics. The other part of the rumor uh, is that it will have better speakers. Echo has always had kind of weak speakers. Yeah. Uh, Google's were a little bit better. I think that was one area Google decided to excel in. Mike, did you bring your Google Home with you to Morocco? I didn't, but I always bring uh, my Echo with me everywhere we travel. You have an Echo with you? Does it, it work? In, does it work there? It works great. You can't. You have. You can't. Um, it it won't uh, default to where you are. So we have to specify. If we want the local weather, we have to specify right. Fez, Morocco. Uh, but other than that, it works great. It plays music. It plays our Amazon uh, music and so on. And that's one of the reasons why we bring the full size Echo because it's also like we can always have music. You know, everywhere we go. So Plus you don't mind those speakers? You consider those adequate? They're certainly adequate. I, I really. Uh, it's hard to. Think of any sort of speaker system that's that compact that would be I guess uh, right. significantly better than that. Yeah, compared right? so to any Bluetooth speaker, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for the Sonos yeah. integration. Yeah, we were supposed to get that six months ago. I yeah. think I think there's something not working quite mm. right yet. I agree that will. Be, frankly, Sonos. If you ha if you had to pick somebody who missed the boat, it's Sonos. If they could have put that technology right. into those speakers, yeah. Yeah. that would have been a killer. The, product. the school well, I was also nervous. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I, I also think this is an opportunity for Apple to actually get into that Sonos space because really uh, Sonos has a Apple-esque kind of reputation for high quality right. and a compact size that's very elegant to use and so on. And I, I think Apple would like to be in that space except for just dumb speakers are not interesting enough for Apple. If they can have really high quality speakers, and again, I don't expect them to necessarily do this, but I think they should do this. Really high quality speakers that could also double as extra speakers for the the Apple TV experience. I think that would be great. Either way, it doesn't matter. The, the Apple fan uh, fans are all going to jump on this thing no matter what. Uh, it's going to be Siri. It's going to be adequate for lots and lots of people no matter what. And I believe, and I said this before in the show, Leo, I think this whole smart speaker uh, thing is a stopgap. And eventually, we're going to be wearing this kind of thing. Uh, somewhere on our body, probably in glasses, probably, uh, you know, AirPod type of uh, integrations. You know, give, give it give it five years or six years or seven years, I think that smart speaker is going to seem kind of antiquated. Yeah, but fi five years is a good product life. I mean, that's, yeah. you know. Yeah. The, yes. problem, the problem yeah. is, I mean, I can see Apple doing the hardware, but I just don't think that they will ever catch up to, you know, frankly, it's going to be Google that's going to win. Because while Echo is ahead, because they launched earlier, Google's the one collecting all the signals. Google yeah, knows yeah, more about. Yeah, but you don't think. Well, you're an AI guy again, Phil. You don't think that's a giving them a head at start? I think the the main lesson about AI right now is uh, the most important thing are really well thought out specific use cases. Not not data, not training. No, it's like it's it's interaction. It's like who's got the best attention to detail about. What are the great experiences that you're going to have with this thing? Is that because we're at early days and so general intelligence, general artificial intelligence is way off, so we have to be domain specific? or Because ultimately, wouldn't we want something that was generally intelligent? No, why? Because um, <laughs> then I don't have to know what domain that particular agent's good at. I can just address a question to it. Isn't that what we wanted? Isn't that why Siri fails? I don't think so. I think like where AI as an industry went, went wrong is... Uh, Right in the beginning, right with the Turing test. Like the Turing test was a. Most AI experts agree that that was yeah, a dumb. It's just like a it's a bad idea to try to make yeah. something that's generally intelligent, especially if you're if if the bar you're setting is like human level intelligence is somehow like the that's, goal. And it's a, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. That's challenging. Like, and 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 there's so much you could do much, much more, so much useful you can do before well, that. Everything that I work on, starts out being better than human, like in a in a domain. Exactly. And I don't care about what a person could do there's plenty of people on the planet that i don't really feel like interacting with i don't need more of those uh i want experiences i want experiences that are better than what a person can do 
This is, this is AI um, focused on that. Ropes. All right, I get it now. Okay. Um, so okay. Alexa is much better than a person could be. I'm sorry, Echo is much better than a person could be uh, at the stuff that Echo is good for. Mm -hmm. um, and also Amazon and Siri, is, I think, is different with Echoes. Say again? Sorry to interrupt. Well, Amazon is, is way ahead of the game precisely because of what Phil is saying. They have the Echo look, the Echo show. They have the different types of Echoes, and that's, I think, Brilliant to have a different yep. special purpose echo for every room in the house. Can't wait for the bathroom echo. Don't think of it uh, as like a, I don't even think of it as special purpose. I just think about it as like a sharply good experience. I mean, that's what, that's the products that win. Like once the technology gets to a point where it goes from being a engineering problem to being a product problem, like the products that win are the ones that are the best designed with specific interactions and delightful experiences in mind. All right. I, I have a different take on how Apple fits into this. Uh, I think uh, Google Home's problem is that it doesn't have it doesn't have a way to monetize it well. Echo has a way to monetize it because people buy more stuff through Amazon because they're using the Echo. Apple has the perfect monetization strategy. They sell the device in large quantities. Um, but to do that, there has to be a high margin device. Yeah. Uh, it has to be more. I mean, an Echo, you can get a dot for forty dollars now. You yeah. can get all of the echo, the entire Echo experience minus the speaker for forty dollars. Because Amazon makes it up on the other end. But what would Apple have to charge to make this a valuable product? Yeah, it, Hundreds. No, it doesn't matter. Hundreds. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's Apple. And they're going to buy it. Like, like Mike One said. of the things I'm intrigued about is whether Apple can go international fast. Right now, uh, uh, the Echo is, is, is dominant, but only in the United States. If Apple can do a smart speaker system and go global, they'll suddenly be ahead of everyone. Right. And they already have a lot of language stuff under their belt. Um, I think a lot of this comes down to like where is the where is the center of gravity where is like the center of empathy for each company um and you can mm -hmm. tell a lot i think about what's going to happen just based on that do you mean empathy or brand reputation i mean like like what what fundamentally is the most important thing to each company and like for amazon like the empathy is really on selling you stuff right whether it's pro physical products or subscriptions or amazon prime or video like they want you to they want you to buy stuff that you love and need and have a good experience with. Right. For Google, their fundamental thing that they're about is, is showing you ads and like getting you to click on right. stuff. Same as for Facebook. Right. For Apple, their fundamental thing is selling you Apple devices. None of these companies has transcended past that original Increasingly, focus. Increasingly, Apple's services company, too. A lot of their revenue is coming yeah. from services. They see that as their biggest growth area. And, yeah, but like, what's yeah, the stuff that they're that excellent at? Like the, yeah. the, the okay. Amazon is world class at selling you stuff. Apple is right now really world class at making the devices. They both, I think Amazon and Apple both share an interest in making it really a good experience for the customer. Mm -hmm. um, and for, for Amazon, it's a good experience for the shopper. Yep. And for Apple, it's a good experience for the, the yeah. user. Google, not so, I, my experience is not so much. Try to find yeah. a human to help you with a Google problem. I think, um, uh, I think the the Amazon uh, like center of gravity is closer to what will make a good assistant a good AI than Google's mm -hmm. or, or Facebook's. I think if like if, if if the company is basically about like getting your attention, distracting you, uh, making you click on an ad, like that isn't a quality that you'd want in a friend. And it's pretty hard to make you uh, listen to ads on a Google Home. Right, I mean, but it's just like you wouldn't you wouldn't accept a person acting that way. No, to no, you. of course not. Uh, so I think that. That's going to give them a harder time in actually getting to the the, the most amazing AI products. Yeah. Whereas eh, I, I think I Apple and Amazon are better aligned. I agree with what you're saying, Phil, but I would amend that to say that Apple's genius is not just selling you the hardware, but it's getting money on all the levels. They yeah. they sell you the hardware, they sell you the software, yeah. they get they get a third of what other people right. sell you. And and it's all of it. It's the services. It's yeah, everything. I agree. Subscriptions. You name it. And and I think that's a really interesting model for Apple on this kind of device. I mean, if you think about the the money that they could make on an app store for the smart speaker, mm -hmm. it could be enormous. I mean, I, I have trouble really picturing it. And nobody's done it well. Uh, Amazon certainly has not done the third party, uh, you know, uh, app app thing very well. You have to memorize all this stuff. It's it's very difficult. Sure. If somebody like Apple can crack that, if the if the if the if Siri can actually choose the third party app, offer it, you can buy it with a with a command or whatever, then they could be way ahead of the game and they, they could be looking at a at a revenue stream that's comparable in some ways to the iPhone app store where it's just very lucrative and they dominate the field for those third party yeah. 
I think that's uh, right. Apps. And I and I think Apple had a problem with people asking for music and getting it from either Amazon or Google. Apple really needs them to get it yeah. from Apple. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this is an opportunity they can't. It will pass. probably. It sounds like then it'll probably be uh, a fairly expensive four hundred, five hundred dollar music device with very good speakers, right? Yeah, uh, well, you know, the, it, it, I, I, it sounded good when they said it had surround sound, and then I looked more closely, and it said virtual. Well, <laughs> remember they had a speaker <laughs> once? Yeah, they did. And I remember Steve Jobs saying he threw out it, his stereo because yeah. he liked the iPod Hi-Fi yeah, so they much. Had that, they had that thing. I, it I was bought a one. flop. I, yeah, I bought one, and then they never spoke about it again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, uh, it sounds like the most important thing Apple could announce tomorrow, frankly, will be a Siri device. Uh, I think the hardware, thing. the hardware gets the attention with Apple. Uh, yeah. I think, although tomorrow is not a hardware event, it's a developer yeah. event. But Apple has so few events, so few times that they can talk to the press and the public mm -hmm. that I think they treat WWDC as a keynote in the truest sense of the word. Well, right. You don't usually get insights into the new hardware though at WWDC. The, in the, they have from time to time. They've yeah. announced Macs well, before. So Mac times. Pro, you know, yeah. was the headliner then. Yeah. And there's usually developer focused stuff, but. Yeah. The, uh, so I don't know, and even if they announced the laptops, I don't think that that would be a big thing. The reason I think the Siri announcement makes a lot of sense is you're, you're talking to developers. You're talking about basically a new ecosystem, a new almost right. a new, new platform. platform. Yep. Yep. So I developers mean, are very home run. Yeah, if you think about the, the perfect home run uh, that they could do tomorrow would be to announce this product, have it be super high quality, have there be one or two attributes about it that are surprising, and then say, here's the SDK, everyone, go for it. It's I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine that they'd be that far along with it, but that would be amazing if they did that. It's hard for me to believe that it's really going to be like a high-end or even a medium-end speaker system. I, I know that's what everyone's saying, and I, I guess it's you know likely to be true. To me, it just seems like Apple announces stuff that can grow fairly quickly. And for their target audience, like most people who are Apple fans have high quality speakers of whatever type. Oh, so installed. you think it'll be a thing you plug in, like an Apple TV, a thing yeah. you plug into a system. I just don't think they're going to do something that's going to take years to roll out. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a huge Apple fanboy. Right. I've bought just but, about everything that Apple's ever released. So you, you I'm not going to go buy new speakers. Take Siri in, as it stands in the phone and put it in a standalone device. It, Maybe. Uh, by the way, home or, automation is also, I think, they, yeah, yeah. we kit. kept expecting with HomeKit that they did deliver a hub. They have yet to deliver so a hub. The Apple TV wasn't. What on. I would love is uh, for something like Siri would just be the hardware is just super high quality microphones. Yeah. And it just inter it integrates well with whatever speakers you've got set up. Yeah. Like that, that would be the thing that I would Via want. Via Bluetooth? I don't know, something. Magic. Something. Magic. Um, but I'm not going to, like, there's no way that I'm buying entirely new speakers tomorrow. Right, that's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. And what, so, would Apple release well, something that could that didn't have the potential to sell you know millions of units right away? The only reason I went that way is, is because we agreed that large margin was critical as a hardware company, right? Yes, so. but but they they the mar large margins are in China for Apple now. So, does everybody in China yeah. have a super ultra high quality speaker system? I don't think that that's true. Um, and the other thing is that I, I, I we also know about Apple that they love to control the entire experience. I, I doubt that. Apple's going to want to just say, well, whatever speakers you have around, that's going to be your experience with this. And I can't imagine Apple coming out with a sound experience, a music experience that's inferior to the Echo. It's got to be better than the Echo. Right. I, Not much better. Well, it, it would be much better than the Echo if it worked well with your existing speakers. All it would have to do is be stereo. I think. Be no, the I, I agree with Mike, though. I, I think the speakers, there's an Echo. <laughs> the standalone thing has to be sound better than the other two the other the other three is Cortana. Yeah, and, 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 and home actually sounds well there is no microsoft's been rumored to but has not announced a standalone cortana okay. device well or not at all right or it doesn't have to sound like anything which in which case it won't be compared to it right i think that's but that's a little bit more of a commoditized product that's like the echo dot where it is i mean i can see the, the, the apple tv doesn't include a television set it's just a box that connects your yeah i mean High quality speakers are heavy. They're bad for logistics. Uh, there's like all sorts of things that make this seem to me like a not Apple. Do you see product. maybe two products, one with speakers, one without? But maybe. I mean, Apple already sells third-party speakers in their Apple Store and always right. has. You go in there and there's a big clear speakers and all that kind of stuff. They're already selling speakers, so I, it seems like they want to sell them. Um, Isn't Beats it, fundamentally a speaker manufacturer? I know they're little speakers, but they're speakers. Couldn't we have Beats speakers? That's a by the way. That's a brand that would probably do very well. Is a beat, a beats, uh, you know, desktop or or high high fi speaker. But, uh, to me, that speakers feels like a low margin business and not the kind of thing that would. <laughs> the really headphone business is a very high margin business.
It's a huge high mark. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, your pot's too. Oh, but but how, how cool is this? None of us has any idea. This is, this is a, this is a unusual. shocking. It's unprecedented. Yeah. 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 Mark Gurman, where are you, you on this You thing, just man? made uh, WWDC about 100 times more exciting because I was really gearing up for a fairly dull show. But this will be something to watch. What does Apple do with Siri? And when will it be available? This, this month? No. This fall? Yeah. Probably this fall. Yeah, this probably. decade? This decade. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, WWDC is tomorrow. Our coverage begins 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that is 1700 UTC. We'll be streaming it live. Nathan Oliveras-Giles and Megan Maroney will be uh, covering it. And as we always do, Apple has said they're going to stream the keynote. We will do our kind of Mystery Science 3000 version of it. Well, we'll snark away while Tim Cook takes the stage. You know who will not take the stage, and I'm sad to say, is Bozoma. Bo yep. Bozoma. Bo Bozo Bozoma. 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 The, <laughs> the woman who was so good last year at yeah. WWDC. Yeah. It was a fairly dull presentation. And she comes on. She, uh, she's she got great marketing experience. She was working with Apple Music and just light, lit the place yeah, up. Too, too much charisma. She can go have her own career. She doesn't need Apple. They always said she was her own brand. Yeah. Right? And, of course, the first thing we did, Bozoma St. John, the first thing we did is, uh, who is this? <laughs> Where have they been hiding her? Uh, but apparently uh, she's uh, she's tweeted or something that she's uh, she's on her way uh, elsewhere. Axios says this. She was head of global consumer marketing for Apple Music. Uh, all right, let's take a break. Come back with more great panel, esteemed panel. Mike Elgin <laughs> celebrating uh, Ramadan in uh, Fez, Morocco, <laughs> from the rooftops. I, I I'm only doing the eating and the feasting part, not the fasting part, just the feasting. Well, I understand there's some really amazing part. sweets involved in breaking your fast yes. in Ramadan. Yes, yes, absolutely. All the food is delicious. All the Ramadan food is absolutely delicious. You're making me very jealous. Phil Libin is also here, formerly a founder and the CEO at Evernote. He's now, and a VC, he's now at All Turtles, a company, an AI company launching tomorrow. All dash turtles dot com. It's turtles all the way down. I got that reference right. You did. Away. You were one of the few people. No, yeah. really, geeks yeah. know that. Yeah. Can can we hear a little bit more about the name? Why do you call it all? Or should we do that after the break? Uh, let's do it after the break. We'll do a tease, yeah. which Ooh. is so silly on a podcast because it just makes people fast forward the commercial. But <laughs> I, I can't break old habits. My old radio habits. Coming up in just a moment. What does all turtles mean? And what is an AI startup studio? Phil, it's great to see you. Good to see and you. I do at some point want to talk a little bit about fasting. You've lost, you look so good. You've lost a lot of weight. Thank you. And you're you. feeling good. I am. And you inspired me to do it. So Didn't mean to. Yeah. We should show before and after pictures. Well, just all do you a, have to do is look at it. Phil's. Just I, do a Google image we've search. We've actually for, watched it because uh, you've been on the show since before you started doing this. Yeah. And even since the last time you were on, you've lost quite a bit. And your beard fell off. I know. Are, it's yeah. amazing. Are you going to stop fasting? Uh, sooner or later, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you have to at some point. Yeah, you have to eat once in a while. But no, I actually, I, I hope to keep doing it for uh, for a long time. It feels pretty good. It which does. Is the scary thing. Yeah. You're not worried you're going to get into some sort of eating disorder? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I mean, like, I don't want to eat anymore. In fact, after I fast, I usually fast for no more than 36 to 42 hours. But after I fast and I eat, I feel terrible. <laughs> Because I my body's now digesting this food. That goes away after after a few weeks. I just feel I just feel pretty good all 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 the time. All the time. Yeah. He feels good all the time. That's what turtles all the way down means. Boy, that's great. Meanwhile, you and I, Philip Elmer Demit, Dewitt, P E D is here. P E D thirty is his uh, tech blog, where he writes all about Apple 3.0. Apple all the time. All the time. All Apple. He's here for WWDC. Our show today, I added a W. I'm sorry. There's only, there's only two. www.dc. That'd be a good domain name. You just did it again. Yeah. WWDC. WWD40. WWD40. Our show today brought to you by stamps.com. If you do mailing in your business, and actually, doesn't everybody you at least mail bills or brochures? Maybe you're an Etsy seller, an eBay seller, you sell on Amazon, and you got to do fulfillment. You should not be going to the post office, my friend. You should not be going to the post office to buy postage. You should not be bringing packages to the post office. I've got a better way, stamps.com. With stamps.com, you can buy and print real U.S. postage from your computer and your printer. You don't need a postage meter. That's so 1980s. You don't need anything. You just need what you've got. 
and stamps.com. Although, I have to say, we've got a special offer that will send you free a uh, USB scale that will really be a nice addition to your stamps.com. You just plop the thing you're going to mail on the uh, on the scale. Stamps.com will print out the proper postage. They'll even print out a mailing label or print right on envelopes with your company's logo, your return address, barcoding. The post office loves stamps.com. It's, it speeds their automation. They're thrilled to have you use stamps.com. So much so that, uh, you know, you can't just pop a package uh, above, I think it's above a pound. You can't just put it in the mailbox. They want you to bring it to the post office so they can look you in the eye and look at the package. Except if you're using stamps.com, no, that's no problem. They'll come and get it because they they tr they know stamps.com and they know you. It's an amazing service. Create your stamps account in minutes, no equipment, no long-term commitments. They'll Now, if you go to stamps.com, do me a favor. Click the microphone in the upper right-hand corner and type in our offer code TWIT because that's when you get the really good deal. You get a $110 bonus offer. That includes that USB scale. It includes $55 in postage, free postage. That you can use over the first few months of your account. You can't use it all all at once, but that's still fifty five dollars. Of course, you get a month's uh, trial of Stamps. dot com. It's a great deal, a no risk trial offer. Unlike the post office, Stamps. dot com never closes. It's always available. It's right there at your desk. You never have to get up, and you just press a button, and the mail carrier comes to you to pick up your postage. Go to Stamps. dot com. Click the microphone at the top and enter the offer code TWIT to try it today stamps.com do you commit to a certain amount of time for each ad no i think we i think what uh we do is we say uh well you're buying a minute ad but leo doesn't know how to do a minute ad so you're okay <laughs> something like that i don't think i've ever done an ad on the radio i have to you know what it is is after years of being tightly constrained to the second on radio and TV. Now I just let it all hang out. What I don't even wear makeup. I just it's freedom for me. Well, so on the, yeah. the, on the radio you didn't have to wear makeup. No. But I liked to. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between wanting to and having to. Uh I think when I think of Turtles All the Way Down of uh those great novels by uh Discworld? Discworld. Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett. And he talks at one point about a, a creation story. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it also goes back to the actual creation story of the world being held by on the back of a giant tortoise, right? Yeah. Is that uh, Hindu or Buddhist? Or? So I first heard it. It's a name that I've been thinking about for, for years and always wanted to call something called Turtles and... Uh, Mostly because it's an unusual name. Kind of sticks in your brain. I love turtles. I'm going to the Galapagos, which is turtles. Lots of turtles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there I first... it is. There's the giant turtle ho holding the disc world. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sometimes it's uh, the world is on the back of an elephant, which is then right. standing on a turtle, and then that's right. turtles all the way down. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, there's no elephant. Yeah. 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 Um, that's what how Terry Pratchett describes it. Yeah. I first heard it as a Carl Sagan story, but that's, I'm sure, apocryphal. Uh, sometimes Bertrand Russell. I think it's the Bertrand Russell uh, story. In fact, um, yeah. Stephen Hawking mentions it in Brief History of Time. Yeah, that's probably where I read it. So yeah. it's Bertrand, Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell was giving a lecture. He described how the Earth orbits the sun. The sun orbits, you know, the stars called our galaxy. At the end of the lecture, a little... <laughs> I'm quoting Stephen Hawking, a little old lady, we don't say that anymore, Stephen, at the back of the room got up and said, Sir, what you've told us is rubbish. The world is really a flat plate supported on the back of a giant tortoise. The scientist gave a superior smile before replying, Well, what's the tortoise standing on? <laughs> You're very clever, young man, very clever, but it's turtles all the way down. Oh, I get it. So nice. there you go. That's nice. it. That's the idea. Is, uh, and, and, but how does that have to do with AI? What does it have to do with AI? Uh, well, it's a platform of platforms. It's, uh, the idea is um, whatever you're uh, building, you're standing on the shoulders of the, the people who came before you. You're, you're helping the people that come after you. Nice. Uh, so you're one uh, of the turtles. Uh, we're all turtles. That's right. <laughs> uh, also, since you know elephants stand on turtles, it's a good sequel for me. <laughs> yes, because Evernote was an elephant. That's right. yeah. I get yeah. it now. Yeah. And, uh, then, and your next startup's going to be what? The sea lion? It's all going to be turtles. That's it's it. Cormorant. <laughs> turtles turtles all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> and you already have, it looks like you already have uh, some... Uh, we have 11 products that we're starting with. Is it an incubator? Uh, 
Um, I, not really. It's, it's more of a studio. The basic idea is um, uh, we're kind of challenging the idea that if you're a brilliant product person, that what you have to do is make a company first before mm -hmm. you can make a product. We're product first. Uh, oh, you know, I if like you're it. Uh, yeah, look, if you're a brilliant writer, like you just write. You don't have to right. make a writing company. No. And if you're a musician, you just play. You don't have to make a music company. Right. So why is it that if you're if you have a vision for a product that you have to make a startup first? Nice. Why don't you just make a product first? And so um, yeah, it's a worldwide uh, kind of is like studio. an incubator. Well, except we're well, not like focusing Bill on Gross's companies. Ideal Lab a little bit maybe. It's like a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, I, to me, I'm most inspired by maybe Netflix and Amazon. Like I'm mm -hmm. trying to make Netflix. Not a bad thing to make. Like, the, Netflix this, for I'll apps. take that. Netflix for AI products. So just the nice. same way that Netflix like attracts the most talented people in film and television and they make amazing stuff and they distribute it and they go, you know, full circle. We just do that worldwide well, that, for uh, products. Among other companies, Loic Lemur's Leaders is a part of That's right. It's a, an AI platform for finding speakers. And I all, didn't know that Leaders was AI. That's interesting. Uh, all of these are, are, are uh, I'd say, practical AI, which is, um, it means that we really focus not on the cutting edge tech stack, but on the design aspect of it, like on the use cases. Um, we kind of did this with Evernote, right? So like Evernote, we started Evernote at like, we got lucky at just the right time. Right as mobile apps went from being an engineering driven problem to a product driven problem. So like if you were building mobile apps in 2005, it didn't really matter how good your design was because it was all like technology constrained. Right. right. But if you were building mobile apps in 2008, mm -hmm. like the ones that won were the ones mm -hmm. that, that took it as, an, as a product challenge, mm -hmm. as a design challenge, mm -hmm. not just an engineering challenge. So we're kind of at that stage. AI, AI is exactly at that stage, yeah. So if you were building something three years ago, it was very much engineering driven. Like you right. needed the lab coat wearing PhDs at Google. Right. Now, as long as you're not trying to do general AI, as long as you're trying to do like a specific beautiful use case, it's gone from being engineering heavy to being product heavy, and like that's the time for us to step in and do do something. Did Google's TensorFlow change that a little bit? I mean, it's an open source AI platform. Yeah. You can use their TPUs now. They're doing hardware. They announced yeah. to Google I/O. Yep, absolutely. I mean, TensorFlow is a great example. Commoditize the software and hardware. Commodity commoditize isn't the right word, but it's definitely a platform. So Made it easy to like get. To. All turtles is a yeah. it's a it's a meta platform, right? It's like it's basically saying that what you couldn't do before now you could do because there's a platform for it so now you can get closer and closer to just building the product first and what, that's going to keep happening what language do people work in uh english if they're in the u.s the japanese in tokyo <laughs> really uh yeah uh we're we're agnostic about the tech stack uh so there's there's all sorts of there's like there's some of everything uh there's a lot of tensorflow there's there's but there's also just a lot of java there's a lot of python it's it's everything there's a lot of r which i like to say like a pirate I think it's better. No. It's the statistics-based uh, language. Yeah. Um, it, it, the um, the idea is, uh, if you're a brilliant product person, you have a vision. You, you see a hole in the world in the shape of your product idea, rather than having to uh, make a startup and figure out how to do all of the hard but not interesting company stuff, which I had to do for twenty years. <laughs> you just make the product first, and then we figure out everything you, else. In other words, you're just like me. You're just trying to avoid the things you didn't like about your last job. Your last 20, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, like maybe it's an incubator, but really, like, every other incubator focuses, like, what do they incubate? Right. They fetishize companies. Like, right, they want to, like, right. they want to incubate little companies. Yeah, and what yeah. we're saying is, like, the companies are relevant. We just want the world I to have amazing products. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a very interesting concept. Me too. It starts tomorrow. Well, we, we move into the office tomorrow. Oh, how fun. Uh, we're on, in Soma, uh, 9th and Harrison. We have our uh, the San Francisco location, and then we're opening up Paris and Tokyo by the end of the year. So you're one of those guys that just can't sit on the beach. you got to go out. Yeah, and I got sunburned real easy. you got to start another company. You just can't just take it easy. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really see... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to a, a friend of mine, David Friend, who's the guy who started Carbonite. Before that, he did Synthesize. I mean, this guy sure. started 100 companies. Yeah. And you It's know, only my fourth, so. Yeah. He's, he's an older guy. He's older, he's older than me. He's probably almost 70. And uh, he was, he kind of retired from Carbonite. And he started another company. He said, I just can't stop. It beats working. It must be fun, I guess. Uh, it's fun, but, you know, I'm not optimizing for fun. Like, I really want to do, do something that, 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 something. that has some impact. Yeah, 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 and uh, I think this could. And I got an amazing team, so I'm thrilled. I'm optimized for fun. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's why we're here yeah, and Phil over. is there. Uh, someday. someday. Uh, actually, Phil, you're surrounded by people optimized for fun because I suspect Mike Elgin is also optimized. For, he's optimized for travel. If I Mike know. was optimized for fun, he would be wearing a fez, whether or not it's common <laughs> over there. I know he owns one. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. So big thread. This was kind of interesting uh, on Reddit that got a lot of attention from Apple folks. We'll do one more uh, Apple story. This is Foxconn Insider. Uh, which implies perhaps somebody who's deeply, intimately connected with the supply chain in yeah. China. Everything yeah. reported today, and I, it, it is kind of a collection of all the Apple rumors. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just who had this? Uh, this was a big thread on Reddit. Oh, Got a lot of attention. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and somebody on this page has collated all of the different things that Fox. Oh, I should have done that. Yeah, well, you still can. Yeah, I'm just, just lifting. Right? Yeah, just, just just cut and paste is an awesome tool. Or put it in Evernote, and then that way you've sanitized it. But those links are live, all those links? Yeah. Oh, cool. So uh, uh, they talked about the next generation iPhone, and a lot of these rumors were heard that it, it's going to be harder to make than Apple anticipated, which might mean it, it's a product that doesn't come out this year but early next year. They have, want to put the fingerprint sensor under the glass, but that's not going to be this. That's not going to be tomorrow. That's going to be like in in the iPhone event. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this the is all. X. This is everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the rumors. Yeah. Um, you don't believe the transparent iPhone? <laughs> I have a I have a bet with Robert Scoble. He says there'll be a transparent iPhone. Yeah, I he's said, been saying that a lot. I'll buy you dinner in Paris. In right? Paris. <laughs> <laughs> a key savoir. If, if, if there, uh, actually, no, I think I said Joël Robichon. If there, uh, if there is a clear one, so he's expecting dinner in Paris. I'm expecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't, what, what, he, was he, what, what does he get if, you? Yeah. yeah, I got. I have to learn how to bet because yeah, I, a bad bet. I, 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 I never asked for something in return. Am I an idiot? Well, you just have the pleasure <laughs> I, of proving. No, you're just, just you're just supremely confident. I do this with my wife. Yeah, I just feel like you're I'm just confident. Win. Yeah. I always forget to ask for something in return. Yeah, don't do that anymore. <laughs> what is this Project Mirror Shades? Apple glasses uh, with microphones, a light sensor, an accelerometer. Uh, uh, this guy. W why would Fox and, not know and a, about and, that? And a fake nose and mustache. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, well, this, that's what I'm hearing. He's losing my Sur confidence here. Uh, delayed until at least 2018 or 2019. So we used to play, we used to play WWDC bingo. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this is a good year that, for it. Do that a lot, yeah. 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 Siri speaker that should be like so I, right in the center. What 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 you know what I'm hearing, yeah, uh, from yeah. people who also don't know anything. Yeah. yeah. Oh is, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, is we getting we're getting Isonos? I guess what yeah. We were talking or about. we call it Isonos. Uh, yeah. That's a good. Yeah. We're getting code. a new Siri. We might be getting a new Apple Watch. That's been a while. Oh yawn. New hardware. I can. Can anybody get excited about a new Apple Watch? This is a product that doesn't doesn't need a new anything. What would you do different? I would wear it. <laughs> You're not <wearing> <laughs> no. no, I used so, to. I used so to, but I gave up on it. Useful Apple Watch in a in a spec bump for MacBooks. So that's that's kind of yeah. what I'm hoping. Yeah, the, uh, of course, that according, pretty sure, according to Fast Foxconn and Starter, might know about a series speaker because that would be in, in production, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last design seen was similar to the Trash Can Mac Pro, but smaller. Yeah, that's that um, would be pretty. Three prototypes tested: that. one with display, one without, one without a camera. Not shipping till the end of 2017. We use a modified A9 system on a chip. That would make sense. It'd yeah. be basically an yeah. iOS device. The um, Australian guy had the same stuff. It, yeah, it, it's got a grid like your microphone. Yeah, uh, like this. No, like, like this. this. Yeah. Like that, well, that's yeah. You got to have holes for the sound to go in. Uh, will we see a new iMac? We're kind of due for an iMac update. I don't know. I think you could <sighs> slipstream a better chips in there. Maybe. I haven't heard that. We do remember? We do remember that uh, Phil Schiller when he had his. Uh, apology meeting for the five saying we screwed up on the mac pro did say but don't worry pros there's going to be a new imac this year this year that yeah. will make pros happy yeah uh i that that's a stretch because what pros i think will probably mostly care about is not form factor but the ability to swap in more hard exactly. drives swap in newer cards something like the old cheese grater mac if they don't do that or something that is as upgradable as that, they've missed the boat. The cheese grater right, Mac. Right. Yeah. That's what we call it. Yeah. I had not heard that, but I knew exactly what Those you were talking were the about. Those days, yeah. Mm, now I'm thinking of cheese. And I think there's a very good chance that they <laughs> will there's, miss there's the boat. There's five years of government think... cheese unused. Yeah, it's a surplus. <laughs> I grew up on government cheese. Did you? They, oh, remember I that? So Car much the government Carter cheese. They were giving away... Uh, I got when I was a kid in, was our, in our refrigerator. It was good. I thought it was good cheese. We always had like a giant brick of government cheese when I was growing up. It was great. apparently there's still stockpile. Is that like American cheese? It was. It's American cheese that the government cheddar. would give you. Cheddar. Uh, well, it's cheddar. Uh, <laughs> well, it's. Uh, I guess there's excess dairy. 
Yeah. Oh, it is. It's processed cheese. Yeah, I don't think it was anything particularly good, but yeah, we always had exactly that, 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 that in the fridge. This is this is what government cheese looks like mm. in America. That's it. Well, that, I, they well, haven't I mean, had this in craft, a while. That's craft. So I, I grew up. We were Velveeta. we were on food stamps. We got we had government assistance to get food, uh, and uh, there was always a block of a giant block of government cheese for, for years. Uh. Um, how do they do that? Is there, is there like a how do they like extrude cheese the cheese? No, like is there a throw them out of the back of a truck? You go to a, is there somewhere you go to get your government cheese? Yeah, so I think my grandmother would go and get them, and uh, she would yeah, there would like various pantries and like you can go to community centers. There was all sorts of places. I mean, this was in the eighties, but yeah, we, we the reason it exists is because they, as you know, dairy farmers get big price supports, and they get a, and there's a lot of excess milk. Yeah. And so they just, the one way to store milk very effectively is to turn it. Is to give it to poor people. That's cheese. Right? Turn it that's, cheese. That, was, that was my, I grew up storing milk for the U.S. government. <laughs> no uh, wonder you got no it. Wonder you, no wonder you fast. Yeah, no wonder you fast. Yeah, no, uh, but I have fond memories of it. All right. I don't know how we got into that. How yeah, we get into that government seems cheese. random. We were looking at uh, Apple MacBook Air. Will there be an update on the? <laughs> oh, I think it'll be discontinued. It, although I've heard some rumors that it will be updated. It breaks my heart. The MacBook Air. I mean, it's the last MacBook that I like. Yeah. Uh, then oh, they you're started, using it. Yeah, they started taking my ports away. They. Oh, made I'm, the keys. I'm a convert on the new ports. I got you the like new it? MacBook Pro, the 15 inch. I didn't like it at first. I thought I would really. I wrote like a little sad letter, a uh, breakup letter to to MagSafe. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know, because I, I really Mac miss Safe. MagSafe. But Type-C nope, is good. I I've like moved Type-C. on. Yeah, I love USB-C. Why? It's Problem great. With the Mac, but the uh, Air is the screen is very low res right. compared to what's out there right. now. But I would love to see a refresh that gives you a, a retina display. But I don't think you will because that competes so closely with the MacBook. I'm also glad they got rid of the glowy Apple in the back. What? Damn. That's the best thing ever. Nope. It's the only Why? It's the only feature that Apple had for a long time that was completely not, like, customer-centric. It was totally for Apple's benefit. It had nothing to do with the like with the end user well, benefit. It was upside down originally. Yeah. Well, and the, yeah. you can't see it when you're using it. Right. So all it's doing is like calling attention to you, taking a little bit of power, and advertising Apple. It was their it was their last non beneficent feature. And well, I bet we can now it's gone. Another one, but. But, but how many users uh, Apple laptop so that the world can see that hey look at me I'm using an Apple laptop. I mean, yeah. it's, it's kind of a branding thing. Well, like, it, it, uh, it was, right, but you, it's not for the user. Deny, no, of course, but you can't deny how successful it was. You would go to a conference. You would even go to a Windows uh, event, a Microsoft right. event, yeah. and you see all these glowing but this, apples. But this is like row. maturity and confidence of the company they that they don't need to. need to do that anymore. Yeah, they're doing what Microsoft's doing with this. They've got a little mirrored logo instead of a shiny. Is I mean, it's it still there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they took it off. So I was glad to see it. And the Mac safe I missed, but USB C is better. Oh, you'll be glad to know the Mac Mag safe will return in about twelve to eighteen months, according to the insider, the Foxconn insider. All right. As long as so the best thing about USB C charging was that it's really fast, but also the the fact that you can plug it into on either side, that's a big deal. Like I didn't realize how often you know it's huge. I was at a, I'm at an airport Very or a hotel useful. and like being yeah. able to plug it in either side, like for me yeah. that's worth Do you losing like the Mac touch safe. bar? Provisionally, yes. I like the idea it? of the yeah, touch bar. I use idea. it sometimes, but sometimes, like, like in sometimes it kind of annoys me because I accidentally hit it and like send an email. That's what drives me nuts. I get Siri yeah. pops up all the time, and mm. yeah. then I move Siri over so I just have a blank space, but I'm still hitting it. Yeah, so it just drives me crazy. Uh, I actually uh, traded down to the touch barless. Method. Yeah, I like the idea. Of it. And then I bought a Lenovo laptop. And I, I love it in Keynote. It. That's what I heard. I love it in Keynote. Uh, so if I'm doing a slide deck, you know, I was just oh yeah, doing I guess slide decks. So like, it's like uh, a Keynote uh, remote. Yeah, but like being able to see all the slides and thumbnail and just jump directly to oh, the slide cool. you want, that was actually okay. really cool. You know, what? like that up my, my that's keynote the game. first use case that I've ever heard that actually makes sense. Yeah, so I you know I was just raising money for all turtles, and so I gave a bunch of keynotes, and being able to just like jump to any slide answering questions, so it always looked like the question that was asked was my next slide. It was amazing. Cool magic, magic. Yeah, that actually, I okay. That's the first thing I've heard. They showed you know a DJ. Mixing music on this little touch yeah, bar yeah, yeah. on the event, and I thought, yeah, what's wrong with a touch screen? You could do everything and more. And I, I, have, I'm now so that's why I bought a Lenovo. And Lenovo has ports: three USB, two Type C. It has an Ethernet port, a weird Ethernet port, but an Ethernet port. It has a full size what is HDMI. An Ethernet port, like a token ring port. Like, why do you need an <laughs> Ethernet port? Occasionally, there are times you'd like yeah. to hardwire. Why? Because we have 20 megabits. I mean, sorry, 20 gigabits here. And I would like to at least get one of those gigabits into my machine. Okay. It's actually, we're hardwired right now. 
There are times when hardwire for speed, at least. Sure. And you're right. I think most of the time Wi-Fi is just fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I just like it. it's an OLED screen. It's a touch. I'm I'm really sold on touch. You see yeah. me doing this a lot. I mean, it's not. You're right. I'm not all the time. It's basically what it is. Is you have multiple input devices. You have a mouse if you want to use it. You have a touch if you want to use it. On this, I have. This oh, see, and and you don't get hives when you use Windows. I used to get hives. I've kind of gotten over it. I like Windows 10. Right, it's not so bad. Go. Yeah. Uh, Oh, gee, I have to look at this just to see what's going on. I guess there's a basketball event happening this week. Um, oh, Eddie Q. Why doesn't Eddie Q get, <laughs> just fix all the stuff that's broken in his domain rather than telling people to sit down? What's, what's going on? So during the Warriors game... <laughs> show, uh, show, there's a, if you go a little... Yeah, there, there's play that video. thing. Yeah. All right. So Rihanna, famous. You've heard of her. She's a famous uh, You know, singer. I hadn't, but I listened to her all day. She's really good. Oh, she's great. I have heard of her, It's yes. a long story. Yes. Uh, she's a Cleveland Cavaliers fan. She's not a Golden State Warriors fan. They were in, however, in Oakland for the Golden State Warriors game one of the pl NBA playoffs. It's a basketball thing. You would just wouldn't understand. Sports ball, yeah. Sports ball. Yeah. So sports ball. Uh, <laughs> I was born without the gene that makes know, me care about I know. sports Most ball. of the people listening are going, eh. but yeah. this is interesting because oh, it involves Eddie Q. Right. So uh, I guess uh, LeBron James. <laughs> Nobody has ever said. Before. Right, that's right. We're going to make this interesting. This NBA sport ball stuff, but we're going to make it interesting because Eddie Q's involved. All right, that shows you. That's now you know you're listening to Twit. Uh, so uh, LeBron has got a free throw. Rihanna uh, sh jumps up and starts shouting "brick," which means miss it. All oh, right. Oh really? Yeah. Now, now we take you. So she's shouting, shouting brick. And they're, what? Eddie Q? <laughs> By the way, both of them have multi-thousand dollar front row, ringside, they call them courtside seats. She's shouting at LeBron. Eddie Q stands up. There he is saying, sit down. I didn't see that part. Yeah. I'm glad, to, I'm glad they saved it on Twitter. Well, and then, then the result is that a, a million Rihanna fans, you know, she gets half a billion views on her videos on YouTube. So Half look at this. Billion. If Eddie Q doesn't apologize for his recent misogynistic outburst towards Rihanna, I'm canceling my subscription to Apple Music. So it went viral, and people did cancel their subscription to Apple Music. And then Eddie Q had to issue a an apology. Well, he said, I, was, I wasn't telling her to sit down. I was telling that other girl to sit down. He was but talking he to telling... Marissa. So what? that's not actually an apology then. He's, it's an explanation. Uh, hmm. But why is he telling anyone to sit down? Well, let's look at the... Now, there's more video, apparently. Oh, Rihanna's throwing some shade. Uh, she was not happy about Eddie Q. Yeah. Something. Well, let's go back to the, the, the GIF, because... Or GIF. Who, who, who is you see Eddie the, Q? There is, another, there is another woman in yellow standing up. Sure looks like down. Eddie's shouting at uh, Rihanna. But right there, there is that other woman standing and maybe her name is Marissa. I think I think Eddie should just shut up and sit down he and watch work. the game. He should work. You know, he shouldn't be at the game. He should yeah, be getting the job he done. He's he just, should. Where, where are the original yeah. Apple programs to compete with Netflix? What What is he doing? Fic he should be fixing iTunes. He shouldn't be having yeah. fun. There's I've a lot never of stuff he felt doing. more isolated from like the human race than during this story. <laughs> Let me ask. Like, I just don't understand any of this. As a, as a, as a, somebody who's had products Eddie and company, Q all the way down. company founder. <laughs> I know Eddie Q is. Oh, now, here's the, now, the chat room is saying, I know sports. I don't know what a Rihanna or an Eddie Q are. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost the audience. So, yeah. <laughs> That's actually... Uh, I, it's a funny story, I have to say. I, uh, but... Is it really reasonable to say Eddie Q should be working, not enjoying a basketball game? People should have some time off, right? I mean, that seems like a lot. Yeah. So we're not really saying Eddie, shut up and go to bed. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, businessmen who who stand in the front row of basketball games make me nervous. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you saw what happened to Steve Ballmer. He bought the team. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know I, what about uh, you? Don't see much of Sir Johnny Ive these days. Yeah, I, you know the whole Apple executive team. That's really a larger issue. Yeah, it? and I, you know it's where I start to agree with you. I, they they just seem intellectually lazy these days. Um, we talked wow, about really? this. I know you went on for quite. I listened to that whole show. <laughs> you spent half of yes last week's show <laughs> ranking on Apple. You don't, no, you yeah, haven't people are saying it, it should, I'm here. It should right. be called Mac. What do they call it? Mac, Mac Bash, Bash Weekly or something like that. 
I, A, I'll defend myself. We don't, when, even if we have topic specific shows like Windows or Mac shows, we're not here to cheerlead for the company. No. no we're here to talk about the company. And, and frankly, I'm a Mac fan from years gone by. And I don't think I'm alone at being a little disgruntled with the direction Apple's taking. Yeah, you, you, um, you think you're I'm, a showman. You think it's too much? Well, you you uh, look what Mark Newsom is I doing. Won't, I won't compare you to the president of the United States, but well, you do have a way you. of of uh, invective of, of uh, exaggerating <laughs> your positions well, for when, a point to make a point. Uh, that's a and, fun. Yeah, to Mark, entertain. But I think it's exaggerating to say Eddie Q should sit down, shut up, and get to work and fix iTunes. That's not really your point of view, is it? It is. It is oh, my okay. point of view. Yeah. All right. Mark we, Newsom, who is see, Johnny Ives. We, we don't even want to see the keynotes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm never going to get a seat at a keynote ever again. That's for sure. Uh, actually, I'm prepared. To, I'm prepared to get on my knees and beg to go to the new Apple campus for September. Yeah, boy. Yeah. That will be the one to get, right? No, I've already fine. begged and I haven't gotten near it. Really? Steve, Steve Levy you brought got up the it. Apple campus, Leo, yeah. can I make a couple of points about this that have not been made and Please I do. really think they need to be made? Please do. The first, the, first, the first is that people talk about whether they should, you know, we talk about whether Eddie Q should ever have fun. Uh, people are also talking about whether Apple should be building big, fancy headquarters. Does this mean the end of Apple? Is this what happens to companies that build an amazing headquarters and then that's the beginning of the end, et cetera, et cetera? I think it has to be said that the new Apple headquarters are the new icon. They are to tech and Silicon Valley now what the Eiffel Tower is to Paris mm. or Europe. And, and what, you know, Big Ben is to London, et cetera. It's an iconic it will always be used in, from henceforth as an iconic visual to be shorthand for tech and for Silicon Valley, and that's pretty cool. The second thing is, if you look at the, there, there's a mystery around parking at, at Apple Park. Uh, they have so much parking, they have way more parking than they could ever possibly need. If you look at the numbers of parking spots that well, they have, plus Apple. Plus Apple's plans to l minimize parking. Now, there's, a, there's an argument that says that the city council requires a certain amount of parking per employees, blah, blah, blah. I don't buy it at all. You look at the future of self-driving cars, you look at their plans to have shuttle buses and bicycles and all that kind of stuff. I think that campus is actually designed to hold 15 or 16,000 people. Hmm. And they, they, they basically built it so that knowing that they're not going to need all that parking there's way too much parking and way too low if they went into the city council and said we're going to we're going to build a campus that's going to house 16,000 people i think everyone would have freaked out oh. so they said ah, it's going to be 12,000 maybe 13,000 i think this campus is i think that within 3 or 4 years there's going to be 15 or 16,000 people at this campus so this is designed enormous. for big expansion and to what end mike does apple expand because money. they are the world's largest consumer electronics company, and they want to get as many people into that he headquarters as possible. But don't possible. they have enough I mean, people to make the products they've already got? <laughs> what? What? I mean, no, no, they, no, they don't. They, they, they don't. I mean, they're always going to grow. They, they're always going to expand, and you know, they, their plan is not to shrink or or plateau. Their plan is to keep growing and growing and growing, and they've already. You know, we we all know that they're spread out all over Silicon Valley. Apple's oh yeah, this is the not their so only location by any means. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And they're still going to stick to their current headquarters or their former headquarters, uh, and they just need all the space. I'm just they saying, can get, if you're going to expand, you got to have a reason to add those four thousand employees. Yeah, cars they're, and stuff. There's a lot of things they could do. Cars? Where yeah. do you expand oh, yeah. if you're Apple? What do you? Where, where is the sweet spot? Is it Siri? It's, is it? Uh, Philip said it. It's cars. Cars are a self-driving cars are a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. They're they're going to become living rooms on wheels, and that's a content consumption experience opportunity. It's the content consumption experience opportunity, and Apple's going to want to be all over it. I, I really believe in that coming yeah. Apple car. I think if they don't do it, will they make in, cars or will they just make software for cars? What is their? I think they'll make cars. They will make build cars, cars. And software. That is but, pretty tough to go up against GM. In fact, there, if no, Ford and there's even before. there's no. even conversation that that Elon Musk and Tesla, who've done quite well for themselves, are about to enter the buzzsaw because now here come the big three. That no, they it, were perfectly happy to Tesla let Tesla go for a decade, yeah. but now it's our turn, kid. Get out of the way. Mike, what were you going to say nope. about that? 
They uh, Apple has been working with uh, the the biggest um, uh, contract manufacturer for automobiles, which is based in Germany. They've been working for them. In fact, there's some there's like a couple dozen of their employees. I'm trying to find the name now uh, of it. Uh, they've been working. The, the, that contract manufacturer has had multiple engineers working in Apple buildings for a few years. And they and and so if you think of they're they're looking at cars the way they look at iPhones. Apple doesn't manufacture iPhones. Foxconn does. And so this company is the Foxconn of automobile manufacturing. And uh, and and I think that that you know first of all I don't think manufacturing a self-driving car, the wheels, the motor, that is not going to be all that in, uh, difficult. The difficult part is the navigation, and that's where Apple is seriously behind. Um, but you know why would they be working with this uh, with this company in in Austria? Uh, why would they be? You know, they, well, you, if you look at their, I, I'm not uh, their, denying their that they reports, they've, they've shown some interest in this. Yeah. Although we have heard that they've backed off a little bit. That they've well, they got they they got ahead of their skis or leaned too far over. They they started building the car before they would built the system. It's, um, it's space. It's space. They're going to space. Going to space. space. This whole thing is going to take off. Well, that's what yeah, everyone wants Elon's a car. Going to space. This is a space station. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, there's well, obviously I, rocket okay, motors so, underneath. Yeah, okay, but this is a question. It's obviously lifting. So off. maybe you know, Philip, this big circular thing here. Yeah. yeah. Is that an ICBM launching port? What is uh, that? What that, is that? that? It's, it's a pool. Um, you know, it's so, a uh, I, pool. I've shown this to a lot of architects who are a little bit of gas because it's. Oh, like, by the way, here's the old barn they saved. Oh, really? So this that, is, is that in the circle? Yeah. This oh. so this was originally an HP campus. Remember, right. this barn was. This whole area used to be <clears throat> fruit orchards. Uh, that's why the right. big mall there is called the Prune Yard. It was all plum trees and cherry trees yeah and uh, in 1910 it's not even an old barn at least connecticut people wouldn't think so in <laughs> 1910 they built this barn hp <clears throat> preserved it in its campus uh. so apple m took it moved it board by board off the premises and they have now restored it back to the premises now that construction is over uh, and the barn will survive for no apparent reason. I think they promised that's going to be the only barn in space when this whole thing <laughs> is in say, orbit around actually, Jupiter. That's probably where the next big Apple product is being designed. Is inside that barn, <laughs> right, right there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a TARDIS. It's much yeah. larger, larger in size. You know, the the thing that people always say when you when they look at that round building is, oh, how inefficient? How? What if you have to meet somebody on, you know, who's all the way on the other Steve side? Steve wanted. They, he yeah. only wanted two bathrooms. I, well, he wanted everybody to walk around a lot so they'd interact. <laughs> I, that makes yeah. sense. I was leading to that story about Pixar. Oh, I'm sorry. I just yeah, stole no, your story. That's okay. There was, uh, he, he, when he, he had the same idea in Pixar. He wanted the tech people to interact with the cartoon yeah. people. And his original thought was, we'll have one bathroom <laughs> and everybody will have to meet there. Uh, he got talked out of that. But I kind of hope they don't make cars. You hope they don't? I hope they don't. I feel like that's a buzzsaw that they, they might. will have a hard time. I hope they don't because, like, I'm bored with cars. Like, yeah. Car, like, well, okay, but you would be bored with it, these cars. I'm just bored with cars. They don't only have one pedal. You'd have to, you know, it'd, it'd either be brake or gas. <laughs> so depending you could, on you could right click time. on the pedal. <laughs> everybody, everybody is bored with cars. That, that's the whole point. Self driving cars are not cars. No, they're, they're living rooms. They're yeah. they're they're places where you go to play, where you go to play virtual reality games, and to have and to have a video. That is the way to get rid of the uh, nausea caused by virtual reality is to play it while you're in a self-driving car. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I have to say, to nausea caused by that makes a lot of sense. The sickest I ever got was playing Doom in a bus. Oh jeez. Uh, that you will really mess <laughs> with your head. I'm just saying. I was I. You don't want to know. Yep. Spaceships. Uh, let's take a break. Our co uh, great panel. What fun. Uh, we got Philip Elmer DeWitt came all the way out from Connecticut to be with us for Massa WWDC. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I thought you said Connecticut. The Connecticut River Valley. Is in Massachusetts? It come, it goes, what are they trying to confuse us? It's the border between Vermont and New Hampshire. It goes through the middle of Massachusetts. It goes through Connecticut. Okay. It's called the Connecticut River, but I live in Massachusetts. Uh, is, it, is that western Massachusetts? Yeah. Yeah, I like western yeah, Massachusetts. Nice. My mom. The five college area, they call it. Yeah, well, I know where that is. Yeah. Amherst, uh, uh, Smith, Mount Holyoke. UMass, Mount Holyoke. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Hampshire. Yeah, I used to hang out there, Hampshire. Uh, also, Phil Libin is here from a uh, brand new company, All Turtles, at all-turtles.com. Nice. 
and celebrating Ramadan from his rooftop apartment in Fez, Morocco. God, I love saying that. Gastronomad.net's Mike Elgin. So you have you've been four hundred year old building. God, that's so cool. You did something uh, yeah. a couple of nights ago that really sounded amazing. You stayed in the desert. It was amazing, and I saw firsthand the power of the smartphone. We went out to the desert. We went out way to the Sahara uh, part of uh, Morocco. There he is riding a, of riding a, a, uh, a bunch of yeah. We we got the, these Berber uh, guys. Uh, you you they you they'll take you out on this camp and you spend the night, Sarah, out in the middle of the desert in this. Hair. It's like it's an amazing experience. But the guy, the entrepreneur behind this business, did everything with two smartphones or two phones. He, he had to climb to the highest dune to get connectivity, to confirm reservations, to check travelocity, uh, not travelocity, to, to check um, what's the other one? Expedia. To check Airbnb, <laughs> book this beer, expe no, not Expedia. Um, Hotels tonight. And, uh, I don't know. No, no. But he did. He ran yeah. his business from the top tonight. of the dunes with his smartphone. Yes. Now this, he was right. He would come down and. Oh, I wish we had better connections. Oh, uh, self-driving camel. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever been on a camel? Yes. Me too. Quite it's a thing. Fun. Yeah. 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 We rode one in uh, Cairo uh, up to the pyramids. It was really amazing at night. Tor flaming torches to light our way. The Asian ones are super more comfortable. Two homes are they? Yeah, you sit in the middle. It's yeah, like, this was a it's good. back tree or something. Yeah. But they do kneel for you to get on, which is kind of cool. They actually, they, their legs... We're just, we're just stalling while Skype gets better. Huh? <laughs> is it a dromedary or a Bactrian? I do not know that. Hey. Is a dromedary? Yes. All right. Dromedary yeah. sounds like the place you don't want to get milk from. <laughs> That's the Arabian <laughs> one hump camel. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The one hump camel's are fine, but really it's yes. the, the two hump camels. That's the that's the comfort riding. Yeah. Do you ride yeah. on the hump of the one in, hump? In, no, you ride behind the hump or in front of the hump. They build a little thing on top of yeah, the hump. Yeah, there's a little hump. They, the, 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 the real guys ride in front of the hump, but the tourists ride on top of the hump. Oh. They build a special saddle oh. and stuff like that. Okay. And they, they have a thing to hang on to and so on. If you're if you're a hardcore, um, you know, legit camel rider, there's a way that you sort of loop one of your legs around and you kind of perch yourself on the top. It's harder to do. You lose a lot of tourists that way. So they, they build this <laughs> like saddle thing. you can't pull out. I've, I've been on the saddle, yeah. I, yeah. But I have to say the ride is interesting. The gait is uh, unusual. Yeah. You have to kind of... yeah. yeah. And I have so to say that the me, coolest yeah. thing was was the was the stars in the desert at night. Oh, I bet was oh. something mind blowing. We saw dozens of shooting stars. We just oh. the Milky Way was like it was almost like it was painted on the sky. It was really I've never seen stars like that. It was really really a great experience. Did they have we a loved tent? It. It was Did fantastic. you stay in a tent or? So there were, they, they have a camp set up with about eight tents, I think, something like that. And we were the only guests. So there were four Berber hosts, and Amira and I were the only guests. They made us a incredible tagine, the best tagine we've ever oh, loved to ever had. Uh, um, with bread and fruits kind of stuff. And then we played, they played some music, and we all sang songs and played the drums and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. And then uh, we, we sort of like, we had a tent, but we asked them to set up a bed outside, so we just slept under the stars. And they all slept wow. under the stars. They just put a rug uh, on the sand. And um, it was amazing. We got up before the sun came up. We watched the sunrise, and, and Sarah we got back on the camels and rode back. It's like an hour ride. <laughs> uh, we're our show tonight brought to you by Carbonite Online. Back, I was just talking about Carbonite and David Friend. Carbonite is they're rocking and i didn't realize but uh, i was talking to david the other day they use some pretty interesting proprietary technology to write to the discs they've really optimized it so what is it it's cloud backup uh but it's cloud backup done right it's automatic it's continuous it's low cost flat fee they've got plans for home starts at 59.99 a year less than five bucks a month for everything on a pc or a mac but then when you go to the business side, man, the office plans include servers. They have a high availability backup, so you don't have any time wasted getting back online. 
They have hardware devices. They uh, the E Vault lets lets you back up locally and then back up to Carbonite. There's the E Vault. It is a solution for every business, and I'll tell you, it solves the biggest problem in business because you're reliant on data, and if your data isn't safe, your business isn't safe. And all you have to do is look at the wanna cry people who just makes you wanna cry, who've lost everything, businesses, hospitals. 300,000 people bit. Now, if you use Carbonite, you don't have to worry about ransomware. In fact, go to the Carbonite site, Carbonite.com, click the Office tab up at the top, and look at their resource pages. They've got a lot of white papers on ransomware mitigation, protecting yourself against ransomware, protecting against, uh, yourself against uh, WannaCry specifically. And it all involves having a good backup. Every security expert says backup is kind of one of the keys to keeping your system safe. Carbonite Cloud Backup. I want you to check it out. You can try it free, which is nice. Pick the plan that's right for you. Go to Carbonite.com. No credit card needed, but do me a favor. There is an offer code when you sign up for the free trial. Use our name, Twit, would you? Because then they'll know you heard it here. But also, uh, you'll get two free bonus months if you decide to buy. you got to back it up if you want to get it back. It's all the more important these days. Carbonite.com. Don't forget to use the offer code. Twit. I think Carbonite's got... Is the best named backup service. Yeah, because it's because it's of the Star Wars. Yeah, uh, well, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, the greatest movie of all time. That was the worst movie of all time. You thought the second. I'm out. Wait a minute, no, <laughs> seriously, you thought that was the best Star Wars movie? It's not that I thought that; it's empirically true. This is established <laughs> science. Oh no, I was thinking the one with Jar Jar. That's not the Empire oh, Strikes God. Back. Yeah, that's that's the episode one. That I don't oh, know what that is. That was terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're talking right. about episode five. <laughs> yes. Okay, I apologize. All yeah, right. the Empire Strikes Back. No, that was a good one. That was a great that's one. That's the one where Luke sleeps in a tauntaun. And yes. They, and they and they trip up those big walker things. Yeah. yeah. That's the one the with the best line ever, which is, Hoth. I thought they smelled bad. <laughs> <laughs> On the outside. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice beat there. Right. Very well there done. Yeah. Very timing. well done. Yeah. Uh, here, I thought hell froze over uh, to this week. It was a shock. Google announced, confirmed, they're going to put ad blockers in Chrome. And that's good? Yeah. Well, it's good it's for great. Google. I realized suddenly, oh, but the one ads that Google's ad blocker won't block is Google's ads. It'll block annoying ads. Annoying ads. And Guess how what? Do they... None of Google's ads are annoying. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. yeah. How do they decide what's Progress. annoying? Well, there actually is a group. If they're not Google's ads. Yeah, they're not. That's annoying. It's annoying, <laughs> it's annoying to Google. There's a group <laughs> called the Coalition for Better Ads. In the, in the great tradition of uh, naming these industry, oh, yeah. you know, self-interest groups with a name better. that makes it feel like it's good for America. Cabca. Cabca. <laughs> uh, Cabba. Uh, Cabba. <laughs> whose members include uh, the Internet, Interactive Advertising Bureau, the Association of National Advertisers, the Washington Post, Thomson Reuters, Facebook... Unilever, Procter and Gamble, and oh, surprise! Procter and Gamble, yeah, Google. Mm, they don't that is much. a party. <laughs> <laughs> but admittedly, there is a problem, right? I mean, ads have gotten way out of control because, because uh, you know what? Here's the real problem, Google, and this is they'll never admit is that banner ads don't work. You look at a banner ad, yeah. and you don't see it because we've learned how to tune it out. So what happened? They had to make them more intrusive. They had to punch the monkey for a while yeah and then they had to do takeovers <laughs> it's got to the point you can't read a page until you click and they move the close box to different place i mean it's just gotten incredibly annoying i honestly don't understand the point like unless leo laporte is reading your ad i don't know why people I even bother paying <laughs> why for them? even bother yeah i'm not against ads in fact mike elgin you gave me the best example of why ad supported media and what we do is is good because it's it's democratizing it means you don't have to have absolutely to, you don't have to have money to hear content or to read content I don't have anything Absolutely. against ads. I do. And, and let me ask you, you guys this. Here, I, there's a behavior that I've noticed in myself where I have an ad blocker, and any publication that pops up a thing and says, you know, you have your ad blocker on, I just disable it for that site just automatically. And it works out fine, I guess, so I just far. leave the publication uh, and never come back. <laughs> you never come back. You hate ads so much that you will. But it. But you understand. And Philip, you run a site that is ad supported. No, it's ad free. That's the point. Why I, do you? Pay? Oh, because you have subscribers. Right. I uh, left Fortune because it was becoming more it. and more intrusive. Uh, you couldn't read the stuff. For I, the I ad. think it is possible to have really good ads. Uh, it's sure. possible you occasionally see You're him. just saying that because I'm sitting next no, to you. No, I, I, I think it's true. Uh, but most of the time, it's a pretty bad experience. Um, 
and certainly most of the time on, on the internet it's a pretty bad experience but yeah. it, it does have the potential for getting for getting better but as we go more and more I mean, mike you were saying this on about wearables right soon we'll just be wearing the, the tech on our glasses like okay look if i'm browsing the, the internet on a giant uh, monitor on my desktop like leo's doing here Okay, I can allocate like then it's not uh, so bad. I can allocate a few pixels to the ad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm if I'm looking at it on well, my mobile, phone, it's a nightmare. How many pixels on my phone am I willing to allocate to an ad? Not very many. Well, there's also the issue well, of once it's in my glasses. Like how much of my retina am I giving up to an ad? But, yeah. but like very the, quickly well, the, approaching the, the zero. Thing is right. that, but the big mystery though is that we always talk about all the personal data that these companies take. Facebook, Google, et cetera. They harvesting everything. They're finding out everything. They're following us to the store. They know they're recognizing our faces. And they still can't give us relevant ads. Like, why is that? Like, if you talk about advertising in your in your glasses, right. if it was perfectly relevant, it was it was so good that it didn't even feel like an ad. It just felt like good advice. Well, it won't be ads. It'll be, It'll be things like you're walking by the the gap and 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 something says, oh, hey, you know what? You need new pants, and you wanted new pants, and What's there's a great deal on pants. You were clearly looking at my pants when you said that. <laughs> I just got these pants. These are like the first new pants I've owned in years. No, that, isn't that a nightmare? Skinny jeans, come on. You're walking down the street, and ads are coming in your Not ears. This is, you guys have just put your finger on the fundamental problem. This is the Google paradox, they call it. If they really were, yeah. like, super useful, they wouldn't be ads. Like, if, like, right, let, right. let's just say Google knew... At any given time, what the five most useful things for me to know right now are, like the five most delightful, useful things for me right now, none of those would be things that somebody would pay for to put in front of me. Those are all things that I would pay to see. Mm. So that they're fun, like yes. the better ad targeting gets, the more they become not ads. Yeah. Like at some point, this idea that someone's going to pay money to interrupt your attention stream is going to be completely in conflict with where the technology is going of actually figuring out what's most important and delightful and useful to you. So ads are of that type are totally not sustainable over the next decade or something okay but but look we'll see how long that takes doing with the amazon echo look this is this is absolutely brilliant you actually point this their camera at at yourself and you say amazon you know amazon does it, do these pants make my ass look fat <laughs> and amazon says yes but these don't. <laughs> that, so that's here. maybe the problem is terminology. But that's not an ad, right? So because the then they're actually going to sell you the pants right. that make your ass don't. Exactly. But maybe they're selling it from a third exactly. party. I mean, maybe Amazon. No, a lot of what's on Amazon is from a third party. Yeah, I have but, to tell but, you. but look, if if Amazon does um, that make it an ad? It's the third party now. So here's the thing: if Amazon gets money, no matter what you buy, they're incented to show you genuinely the best things. Because they just want you to like buy they want more. You to be happy. Yeah, they want more. you to be happy, and you'll make money. I, I That's not that, what advertising I, is. Like advertising doesn't want you to buy right. the best thing for you. It wants you to buy the thing that that somebody has paid to put in front of you because it's not the best thing. So if well, you were the best thing, you wouldn't what? need an ad. Right. You would just sell it. So companies that actually control that's not like true, but okay. <laughs> I'll accept that. It's mostly true. I think, I think right. there are a lot of products that you never heard of that may be the best thing. That's true. There's but then that. you would hear yeah. about it through a recommendation, not through a paid Maybe placement. I don't know. I find I, find, I discover but, stuff through ads. Uh, right, because the targeting isn't clearly good enough what yet. advertising was, especially on television. If you look at Mad Men, it was, that's what the whole show was about. When yeah, they make you about smoke even though you didn't want they're to. They're manufacturing... Yeah. Yeah, they're manufacturing your desire for that product, whereas with all the data collection, they should be able to find out what you actually want, not tell you what you want. So this idea that Google exactly. Chrome is going to start blocking annoying ads, this is what is this coming from? I mean, this is a company that sells ads. Is this a rear guard action because they're afraid you're going to put a real ad blocker on and block all ads? No, I, mean, I think what, what they're doing, it's actually a great idea because essentially – with ad, they they brought down the price. You know, Google is one of the companies that brought down the price of ads so low, and that's one of the reasons ads are so crappy. They want they can simultaneously create scarce scarce more scarcity by taking people out of the you know can't see the ad you know they they, they have all the, they'll have all these people blocking ads uh, by default, and that makes advertising and reaching the remaining people I guess more valuable. Doesn't it? I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's, a, it's a way to for them to get monetization whether you're looking at ads or whether you're not looking at ads. I have a fantastic idea for an ad startup. Uh, I'm going to pitch it to you guys. Free? It's, you it's, it's free? actually, it's, a, it's, it's fantastic slash terrible. This is, all, this is like a half serious startup idea okay. that I have for okay. ads. <laughs> we're going to scrape your email to find out, like, what you bought from Amazon. And then we're going to buy, as you're browsing, we're going to buy ads 
so you see ads for the stuff you already own. So imagine like being on the that internet, and all you're seeing is ads for things you already own. That's Amazon recommendations. No, no, no. It's that's only the stuff you already now. have. <laughs> you're only seeing ads for the stuff but you already have. That's how it works now. It is. That's that's how bad ad recommendations are. But, okay, but why, it's, what's the benefit? It's there to make you want the things you have. Oh. It's right? a confidence builder. It's there to make you want the things you have. It's the it's like it's the stoic it's to ideal that you made the right decision. It's the stoic ideal, like the secret of happiness is wanting what you have. Right. And who pays for this? That's why it's not a best idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, but if you slipped in, you show show them nine things that they already have, ah, and then the tenth and one, one thing they don't have. No, no, no. See, you're trying. You're ruining the purity of this. This is like the <laughs> way to make, to make like, money. All right. Like, <laughs> all right. Maybe you'll like this. This is Google. Remember, Google had this thing I thought it was very good called Contributor. You'd put some money in, and then they would d divvy it out uh, to various Google ad sites. Uh -huh. and, in, and instead of the Google ad, you'd get kittens or whatever you chose to see instead. And I thought that was a good thing. They discontinued it, and this is their new Google Contributor. You go to a website. They've got, I guess, only four so far. Grub Street, WWG, Comic Book, and Popular Mechanics. And... The, Popular mechanics, the, that brings back memories. <laughs> the website says, hey, I see you're running an ad blocker. Would you like to buy a Google contributor pass that will remove ads from your site? And you say, no, I will not. This is, I don't it's know. It's a good idea if they can actually it? scale it. If they can scale well, it, which what it does can't. is It does respond to both of you guys who say, I don't want any ads at all. The problem is there are pl plenty of products nobody's going to pay for. I mean, look what happens with paywalls on a lot of publications, right? Fortune's not going to put a paywall up because they look at the Wall Street Journal or, uh, you know, they, whoever. They threatened to put a paywall up. Yeah, and, and I think they probably yet. thought about it yeah. and realized that's not going to make any money. It's a bad idea. It's, it's user hostile. So, right. But ads are different from, um, from product referrals, right? Like, what well, I've, that's what I do. I feel like when we do an ad, it's a product referral. Yeah, well, it's it, a word of mouth recommendation for a product. I, I think that's right, and I think uh, I think if you had so we're very picky. We pick the clients, the sponsors, products we use. And, you are picky. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. We. Yeah. We, I turn down ads all the time. You have to, because I consider it an introduction. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of my rationalization. I mean, I want to be ad supported media, and my rationale is, well, okay, if I'm going to do this, I only want to recommend products I right. believe. In, but it's right? got to be high quality and and um you're what the way that you do it is is long is is aligned with the interests of the listener, which is you're trying to make it high quality and entertaining and a net benefit to, like to someone's quality of life because right. it wouldn't work if it wasn't. Right. And it also so gives those us those kind of ads are good. It gives us a chance to pee. <laughs> and it's thereby being net positive to the really, quality of that life. That is the value of ads in general. Right. It gives you a chance to go to the kitchen, get a snack, and uh, not miss much of the show. Right. The funny thing is, I don't think people, for the most part, anymore are watching live broadcasts. They're watching on demand, even when they're watching yeah. well, sports ball. Sports is about it. So, like, okay, so House of Cards are, well, that's a bad example because it's not ad supported. But, uh, uh, oh, Fargo, great show. But I'm not watching it live because I want to skip the I want to skip the ads. Well, right? and sometimes like I'll watch something on on demand that has disabled the the ad it skipping. It drives you crazy. I never watch it again. Right. Like I just I get I I can't remember. Th so there isn't much that makes me a, angrier than that. Yeah, but that's a problem because yeah. those programs are free programs that are pro, you that's know, paid the, for by the ads. Them having failed out to figure out a business problem is not my problem. It's their problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand your point of view. I just, uh, it's scary for me. <laughs> Somebody sold me a By the button. way, and podcasts are exactly on demand. I mean, what we do right. is a completely on demand product. So presumably people could skip our ads mm -hmm. uh, just as easily as they could skip a DVR. Which ads. aligns the incentives to actually make them like good and entertaining and informative right. so that most people don't skip them. Which, exactly. Right. Or we do a, a tease at one end and then people stay through the ad to the other end which or, never or you works. have the live blog you know the live chat well we have live but you know it's only it's a tiny fraction of the total audience that, yeah. that watches live and is in the chat that's a that's less than 10 percent of the audience that's so bad. and we don't know how to we don't we can't even monetize it right so even though those people are compelled to watch the ads we actually can't make any money off of them well only the people who could skip the ad and we just hope that they don't skip the ad <sighs> well, one of the business. things that we need in podcasting is to know a lot more information about 
whether people are skipping, what what parts where, when they stop listening. To a I really podcast, don't want to know much, that. Much I really better. don't want to know that. Well, no, I think I think you do because because if people, I mean, I monitor my own behavior, and there are some podcasts I listen to, and I love the podcast, but I I skip the ads because they suck at reading them. On Twitch shows, I don't skip the ads. I listen to them because it's always you different. You probably just zone out. <laughs> no, I, no I, I'm, I'm curious to, 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 to hear the new information. They, they, it's mixed up, and, yeah. and there's, you know, there's, a, there's a lot more energy put into it. You, it's a lot of podcasts, they just sort of – you can tell these, uh, these uh, um, the people doing the podcast are, are being dragged, kicking and screaming into doing the, the ad. They don't really want to do it. Yeah. Um, cause they don't own the company and so on. And, and so it's, it's like, I, it would be fantastic to know which, you know, when people are leaving, when are they skipping? I think podcasters really need to know that stuff. I think it would improve podcasts a lot. The other problem I have with a lot of podcasts out there and it, is that like people start a podcast and it's like 20 minutes of like blah, 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 blah. And they don't get to the point. It's <laughs> like, I don't have that kind of time. They, I would like to be able to tell them, look, get to the, content you know what i mean yeah. i don't want 25 minutes of like hearing about your sandwich or whatever yeah yeah it's funny because when i first started doing this that was a really high uh priority value for us was not to waste listeners times and i think over time i've yeah. kind of stopped doing that i just waste your time like crazy yeah. so i apologize it happens <laughs> no, no you know no, what no, the no. Is, so like, for me I, i'm getting a little sloppy because i just like talking with you know every one of these shows is with friends and often that I don't see very often. So I'm catching up, but I probably shouldn't waste our audience's time with catching up. I should get right to the See, see but that, that isn't, that isn't, I don't think that is like, I, I like that. What, what, what bothers me is when they don't have new guests, it's the same two people. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that they're is boring. No, yeah. I, I don't, I don't yeah. care about your relationship uh, so much as the content, no. and and you know it's fine. five there, minutes is fine, twenty that's, minutes. That's a much. broadcaster value, which is you you know you yeah. you're, you're, the attention that you're given by your audience is of real is is the most valuable thing, and so you've got you got to honor yeah. that. But well, Mike, it sounds like you yep. just resent sandwiches. <laughs> Hey, I've started I, to do nobody some. Nobody likes sandwiches better than I do. <laughs> I'm a big sandwich fan. What's wrong with sandwiches? There's nothing better. Nothing. I started to do some I podcasts, um, and I, I'm just not as loose as you are. So I feel like I, I'm i really old-fashioned about it. I, like, write my questions down yeah. ahead of time. Yeah. I try to... You're formal. Yeah. 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 And, you know... Maybe, I'm just lazy. It's not that I'm loose. I'm just lazy. It's well, too just, much work. You've done it long enough. That you, you know how long I've been doing this? You don't even want to know. I do want to know. 40 years. Wow. Yeah. Not podcasts. But there's, but I don't even think podcasts are any different than radio. This is, I've always done this. How much of that Whenever was radio? Uh, well, podcasting only really started in 2004, so 20, what is that, 27 years? I can't do the math. You know, when we... Uh, so, so, Leo, so, Leo, you're in a perfect position to answer what is, to me, the biggest question of all. Why isn't everything a podcast? Like, why isn't every show, every, why does radio still exist? Yeah, there's a lot. Why, of why, do, why does television lot. still exist? Because well, radio still so exists. I'll t the only reason radio still exists is the car. Frankly, the car, uh, because uh, there's no, there's very little radio listening outside the automobile, and that, and that is a very short term thing. Already, music radio is suffering because. Uh, but but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's not dead. Is there is a value to having somebody to keep you company in your car that is alive and and yeah. right now as opposed to pre-recorded, right. um, and I think that there's that is right. something genuine. I mean, I, you know, isn't it nice to watch live yeah. TV or listen to live radio? And know that that person's doing this right now. Yeah, I mean, it is. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good it's point. companionship. That yeah. was always the reason for radio is companionship. I think NPR and BBC have a model for radio that works oh, and, and i just they, loathe it it's so really pompous it's so yeah. formalized oh, you see where i live every if you ask people i ask people what where do you get your news and they're all listening to npr all i was day listening long. to an Wait, interview i was very interested in and i love terry gross this is not to yeah. knock her but it's more to knock the the, the format the structure uh -huh. she was interviewing uh, the son of George Martin, the Beatles producer. Right, because uh, of the 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. I was very interested. I just bought it. I was really excited. She reintroduced him oh, yeah. in 25 minutes, five times. Yeah. And not just like, I'm talking to Glynis Jones, who's the 
it's like a long. She's re clearly reading, right. Right. and this is formatics, probably dictated by NPR. I doubt. Well, maybe Terry does do that, but she's it pretty old pissed fashioned. me off because I was interested in her subject and I, and I wanted to hear him yeah. talk. I didn't want to hear him her reintroduce him. And, on, and it makes no sense on a podcast. It only makes sense on broadcast because it's only on broadcast that somebody might show up. Right. If you're listening to a podcast, I don't need to re. I reinterest you guys more because it's a chance to plug you and to acknowledge you and thank you for being here. But if you've tuned in this podcast, you better you know by now who Phil Livin is. If you've is. stuck with this podcast this long, <laughs> <laughs> you've figured it out. By now you know who these people are. And there's that strange guy cut from Riyadh or wherever. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Up on the rooftops singing his praises. Let's take a break because I haven't done enough ads yet. Uh, but we will have more with Mike Elgin. I see. I'm doing the reintroduce. I don't really need to, do I? Uh, I think it's a more courtesy to you guys. Like, I just acknowledge that you're here and on the show with us, and I'm I'm grateful, right? You know, we did a uh, it's, podcast. It's nice to remind people. Yeah, we, we did a podcast at Evernote, um, which uh, was pretty a lot of fun. Did it for a few years, and our entire stated goal was we want our podcast to be more popular than Leo Laporte's least popular podcast. <laughs> that oh, wouldn't boy. be hard. I have some very unpopular we, we, podcasts. We made it. We made it like like once or twice, like on the iTunes. How do you even know what my... Un oh, because on, on iTunes. iTunes, yeah. That's not real, though, because that's Billboard style. That's a weighted chart based on number of subscriptions. We were just going... We just said we want our podcast to be more popular than Leo's least popular podcast on iTunes. And, and we BS. made it We made it once or twice. Congratulations. I forget what it was. It well was like, done. It was Bravo. like... Yeah. No, but you understand it's that those... Pilot post, that odd time... Uh, that's just like... Yeah, like 50 of them, that's Subscriptions this week. I, it's not. I choose not to understand any of that. In fact, <laughs> my podcasts do very poorly now because everybody who wanted to subscribe to subscribe, so I get a long time ago. fewer new subscriptions than many podcasts that have far fewer listeners. Be that as it may, Does that makes sense. Be that as it may, my best, you, you want, my best was be, better than your worst. What was what was it? Your worst podcast? Yeah. It's like this week in Fava Beans or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we had to stop doing that yeah. one. It had a terrible. Well, what is that. the measure for? Is there something better than iTunes to measure? Do you have oh, numbers? We know because we have to measure numbers. The advertisers want to know, and that's how we sell. And it. what do you use to measure them? Uh, there. Well, we use. A, we have been going through a company called PodTrack, which is a podcast advertising agency that offers free metrics. But we actually also do our own numbers. We at first thought, you know, it's traditional in broadcast media that you, no one would, if I were a radio station and I said, well, I could tell you how many listeners, you wouldn't trust me. Right. So there's yeah. Arbitron and Nielsen. There's a third party independent kind of certified measure, just like the, for magazines, the advertising ABC, right? Yeah. The Circulation yeah. Bureau. Um, that's an independent metric. But it turns out in podcasts, they, for some reason, they do t trust podcasters. Most podcasters just say a number. And that's that. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, just make it up. <laughs> okay. In fact, I know people are making it up because I look at some of the numbers people quote, and I go, that's impossible. They, there's no way they have those kinds of numbers. So uh, you could say that that's a failing of podcasting, that there isn't this kind of independent metric. Uh, I like it. <laughs> but we don't, we don't lie. We actually under, we intentionally underestimate because we don't, we don't want to get in a situation where we're inflating numbers but see i i believe based on my own uh, listenership and viewership that you are you are better than anyone else at keeping the audience listening and watching and that's why i, th I think you benefit enormously from metrics about how people how much they listen all the way through or how if they listen halfway through or whatever that kind of thing if that were measured and were Maybe. made public there's a cautionary tale uh, for a long time, the way radio was rated was you would get a diary. Maybe some of you have received a diary that said, write down your radio listening and at the end of the week, mail it in. And of course, nobody does. Uh, it's one of the reasons I think no. Rush Limbaugh did so well is that people be were fanatics about Rush Limbaugh, even if they didn't. You kind of look like Rush Limbaugh. I've, oh, by the God, way, I've never that's the worst put that together. Got. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Philip. Uh, but but uh, so you so shows that had like devoted followings would do much better because nobody ever recorded their actual numbers. They, at the end of the week, come and go. Oh, crap! I got to mail this back. I want my five dollars, and they just write Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, oh. right across the board. And yeah. so shows with devoted fans would do very well. Then uh, Arbitron, the company that does this, invented the people meter. Remember, Nielsen does this. They have a box in your house that would measure. Well, they came up with a the way. The company is actually called Arbitron. 
Ar there's Arbitron and Nielsen. Arbitron is the one that does most of the radio it, stuff. It's, it's suspicious that a company that's trying to give you a good stats is called Arbitron. Because <laughs> it's kind of arbitrary. Yeah, is that, it's a little bit, that is an odd choice of name. It's not what right. I would have gone with. So Arbitron figured out a way Brand, to actual um, metrics. It could have been like Precisiontron. And the sad thing that happened across the board, yeah. stations had far few listeners f than they ever yeah. saw from the diaries. It was, this happened about 10 years ago, a massive depression in uh, uh, audience ratings. And surprisingly... Like, for instance, in Los Angeles, all of a sudden, the number one station is a Spanish language station. Mm. Hmm. Wonder why. That makes sense. When they start measuring it accurately, and maybe I'm the maybe I'm the Spanish language station in this story, Mike. You know, maybe I <laughs> yeah. maybe I would benefit from accurate measurement, but maybe not. So let's not, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it drives it drives uh, uh, L.A. radio stations crazy that you'll often hear them say, "We're the number one English speaking station <laughs> in the market." <laughs> it drives them nuts. Uh, but you know, the truth can be painful. Truth hurts sometimes. Uh, <laughs> Phil Lemon here. It's great to have you from allturtles.com with a dash in the middle from uh, from Morocco, from Fez. And I apologize for the audio quality, but I'm so glad to have you on, Mike. It's worth it. Mike Elgin, gastronomad.net. So glad to be here. Yeah. And uh, Philip Elmer DeWitt is making his first in-studio appearance, which is so nice. Yeah. PED30.com. So happy to be here. Yeah. I'm glad you called and said we're gonna. I'm gonna be here for WWDC. Yeah. Like, this is fantastic. You don't really look like Rush Limbaugh. Good. <laughs> Just like Rush Limbaugh. Uh, we had a great week. We have a lot of uh, fun stuff to show you as we put together this little highlight reel from the week gone by on this week in tactical. Previously on Twit. Performing evasive maneuvers. I have phaser range at uh, full capacity. Right. I don't know so if much that fun. means anything. Oh, look, look at this. We saved the Surabachi, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Security now. The attack of the subtitles. Researchers at Checkpoint have discovered a new attack vector. By crafting malicious subtitle files, attackers can take complete control over any type of device via vulnerabilities found in many popular streaming platforms. The new screensavers. That robot's name is Bottler, and there are actually a handful of these robots deployed in hotels across the country. It's a relay robot built by a company called Savio here in Silicon Valley. All right. Twit, now with half the calories. Hey, Colleen, I was just thinking, I got these Death Star plans. Could you just jam them in there, wedge them in there? There, <laughs> there it is. Well. Help me. It doesn't... Jam it! Push it! There! Yeah. <laughs> Jason Howell, what's coming up this week? Coming up this week, on Monday, June 5th, Apple's Tim Cook will take the stage at the Worldwide Developers Conference to showcase not only its big developer initiatives, as expected, but also perhaps some new hardware, including its much-rumored Siri speaker that would compete with the Amazon Echo and Google Home. On Tuesday, June 6th, Google is expanding its Waze carpool service from the Bay Area and limited areas surrounding out to the entire state of California. And who knows? Maybe someday you'll be carpooling with Waze in your neighborhood sometime down the line. On Thursday, June 8th, Yahoo shareholders placed their vote on whether to sell Yahoo's internet business to Verizon for $4.48 billion. No surprise at this point. A yes vote is expected. And if that happens, it would mark the end of Marista Mayer's time as CEO of the company. And that's just a look at a few things that we'll be tracking in the coming week. Join myself and Megan Maroney on Tech News Today every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. 7 p.m. Eastern here on twit.tv. Thank you, Jason Howell. Marissa made some good money for her brief tenure. 50, 50 million a year or something like that. <sighs> that's nice work if you can get it. I don't yeah, it doesn't her. put her in the top 200. I, I know, that's true, though. Isn't that silly? <laughs> Isn't that sad? Uh, I am going on vacation tomorrow. We've got great people filling in for me. Uh, next week, Jason Calacanis will be hosting. Uh, is it, Who's hosting uh, the following week? Is it Jason Snell? Snell, Snell, is Snell is next week, Calacanis. We decided to have only people named Jason hosting the show for the next couple of weeks. So Jason Snell next week, Jason Calacanis the week after. The thing I'm going to miss, my mattress, of all things. I'm looking forward to it. You're not taking it with you? I'm not taking my... I could, though. Startup idea. Hmm. 
I could have a Casper sent to the hotel in Lima. Nice segue. And, <laughs> <laughs> the Casper mattress is the best mattress in the world. They're an online retailer. Premium mattresses made in the U.S. And because they're made in the U.S. and sold directly to you, there's no markup, no department. You know, the department stores double the price of everything. No mattress store markup. So you're going to get a great mattress for a fraction of the cost. Obsessively engineered. It's made of supported memory foams. It, it's hard to describe this, and this is why I want you to try the, the mattress. Because it, it has, it's got sink. You, you know, you're, you're comfortable. There's no, it's not hard, but it's firm. How could something, I don't know. You just have to try this. It sinks a little, I guess. And it's breathable. So it's, as summertime's coming, it's going to get hot. You want a mattress that helps you sleep cool because we know you'll sleep better if you're cool at night. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Long-lasting, too. Great comfort, great support. You buy it online, and here's the most important thing. It's completely risk-free. We're not talking about going to a mattress store and, and lying in broad daylight with your shoes on on a mattress while the salesperson gives you the stink eye. We're talking about taking the mattress home, and actually they, they ship it in a very surprisingly compact box. Look, and you open it up, it comes out, and they give you, they get, there's wrapped in Tyvek, they give you a little hit cutter, it goes, and then suddenly this beautiful mattress doesn't, it doesn't smell like rubber or anything. It smells fat, fresh and delicious. And it's, well, you might worry. You know, it's been in the box. You I'd might eat worry. it. And then you got 100 nights. You sleep on it for 100. Anytime in the first 100 nights, if you're tired of this, you say this mattress is not right for me, they come and get it and take it away, refund you every penny. Cost you nothing. There's no risk. You've got to try it. Free shipping, free returns in the U.S. and Canada. But not Machu Picchu. Unfortunately, not Machu Picchu or the Galapagos. I'm just going to have to suffer. But you know, then it, it's one of, traveling's great because when you get home, it, it makes you appreciate. So and you yeah. get in your own bed with my Casper mattress, my bowling branch sheets, and I go, oh, I'm home. I feel so great. Save an additional fifty dollars on your mattress if you go to Casper.com/twit and use the promo code twit. That way, they know you heard it on the show. Casper.com/twit promo code twit. You win and we win because. You get fifty dollars off. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you, Casper. For Which came first, Casper the Friendly Ghost, or the Cas mattress came second? Casper the Ghost is older, oh. but yeah. Casper Ghost spells it A R, right? C A S P A R, Caspar, or is it Casper? I don't know. Or Kaspersky. Spell the same. It says here. Supportive memory foam, much better than judgmental memory foam. <laughs> <laughs> much more relaxing. Thank you for holding that in thought until. I know. I know. Until we, after the it was year. almost unbearable. <laughs> uh, WWC DC picture on your website. Where yeah, is go it? Go to the very top. Okay. Uh, this is the building. Yeah, and then hit uh, read more. What is wrong with them? What is that? This is so the McHenry uh, Convention Center, Zane Convention Center. I took Est there in 1978. Oh, I took it in Manhattan. That was good, wasn't it? It was good for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> it got me to where I am today, but that's where I took it. Yeah, doesn't it look like it broke out? Like a, God, what That's what my face things? looked like as a teenager. What are those things? Are they those people? are those little people shot from the top. Oh, it's people shot from the top. But we no one really knows what it's about. They Apparently, there's they're, they're centered a around a dot. Um do you think they're going to release an Apple drone? No, it's going to be a jetpack. This guy's clearly no, in a jetpack. Jet Look at him. I think it's an AI Wait reference. A minute. That is clearly jet a jetpack. Is this the guy Apple in a jetpack? Jet it's the Apple jetpack. What is this? And what is where? Who are these people? He's holding. Are they? Is he flying? They apparently they lifted this idea from some art show. Uh, this is uh, okay up close. You get it, but from a distance, you're right. It doesn't. It's not obvious what that yeah. is. It looks kind of. And they like, covered like uh, the. Uh, I don't know what the light rail is called in San Jose, but the whole station's covered with it. Uh, yeah. This is the view from the Apple jetpack. We're finally <laughs> going to get. We were promised jetpacks. Yeah, Apple's when finally we get our jetpack tomorrow. Yeah, so all along down here is. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. And they've closed the street off to make San Jose safe for developers. <laughs> Wow, that's nice to have that kind of money, right? Yeah. I think they're gonna. This means they're gonna do a drone. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the first to say it. Oh, really? look, there's a guy in a wheelchair. You can tell from the top. Oh, yeah, that's, that's inclusive, okay. right? All right? But you can't tell what race any of these people are. Yeah. So there's nothing here that says Siri speaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Must be a false rumor. All right. Uh, it does sort of say AI though. What time is it in Fez? 
always wanted to say that. It is uh, 11 minutes after midnight. So is it calming down? No, no it should be starting not up. at all. Is the kids the sugar is yeah. it wearing off the kids? They, they're having no, more a little more baklava, right. and they're going to go all night. Yeah, yeah, they are. Wow. Uh, Uber has decided to fire Anthony Lewandowski. This was a controversial hire. Lewandowski uh, worked at Google uh, on Waymo, the Google uh, self-driving car. He then went to Auto, which was his own startup, a self-driving truck. Uber f f bought Auto and hired Lewandowski and then got sued because, strangely enough, the LiDAR on the new Uber self-driving cars in the Auto looks suspiciously like the invented at Waymo LiDAR that cost one-tenth what LiDAR normally costs. Uh, the courts told Lewandowski that he had to turn over uh, information, that he had evidence. He asserted his Fifth Amendment right to avoid self-incrimination. A lot of people doing that these days. Yeah, that seems popular. I, I got to remember that. <laughs> I, I have de declined to testify <laughs> on the grounds that I might incriminate myself. I would like to plead the fifth. Uh, the the beautiful thing about the fifth is that you can't actually imply uh, guilt from it. So, Yeah, shouldn't. but you do, obviously. You shouldn't, or else it kind of makes the whole Constitution pointless. Yeah, but you do. I mean, I know the jury and the judge don't, but everybody else goes, <laughs> he did it. <laughs> That's what Sessions said before he was asked to testify. <laughs> he right? did it. Uh, anyway, Uber has been pressuring him to uh, hand the materials over to cooperate. He missed an internal deadline to do uh, so. They God. fired him. Yeah. yeah. So he's gone. Uh, 700 million they paid for that company. Oh, wow. So well, that puts the Marissa Meyer thing in perspective. Yeah. 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 Really. <laughs> um, let's see. Waymo is uh, is also looking at trucking. So is Elon, right? Elon says he wants to do a truck. Well, those are the guys who are going to be out of work. The truckers. truckers. Yeah. yeah. Truckers first. Mm. I'm not sure. Hey, hey, Leo, did you see Logan, the movie Logan? I did. They did a, such a great job depicting the future of self-driving trucks. I thought that was perfect. It's exactly what's coming. I must have fallen asleep in that part. What happened? Also, the future of adamantium claws. <laughs> they, yeah, exactly. Well, obviously, that's going to happen. But they, they, yeah. they perfectly depicted a world where all the trucks are self-driving. They, they're, they're, they're all in a row. They're sort of re responding to accidents and things like that. It was really well done. It looked so believable. And I think, that's, I think, I think trucking is going to be one of the first implementations of self-driving vehicles. It makes so much sense. Uh, already, truck drivers are pushed to the limit, they're exhausted, they they're, tend to be often dangerous drivers and so on like because they have such big vehicles. And they're I, on I think, speed, uh, yeah. But if anybody is still going to see the movie Logan, check, it, check out the detail uh, with which they depict this world of self-driving trucks. It, it's so really, funny. I, think, I, right I actually we just saw the movie. I don't remember that. I haven't all. seen it yet, but I'm the looking forward to it. The chat room thinks he's conf you've, you've confused Logan with Mad Max. It's a little no. short clip in there. <laughs> oh, when the horses get loose. Yeah. Okay, I don't You know, I didn't really like it. <laughs> I was just waiting for that one scene where the little girl just whips up on all the bad guys. And, and then after that, I just kind of went back to my game. So, What were you playing? Uh, yeah. Field Runner's Attack. Yeah. In fact, I should really get back to it. Yeah. Because, uh, well. All right, we're done here. We, right? have an, <laughs> we have an alliance event, and I haven't really... Earned my uh, stars this week, but uh, uh, let's see. So there was a big, there was a big uh, uh, thread of information about Twitter, fake Twitter followers. It was prompted by somebody who said that Donald Trump, half of his followers, were fake. They're Russian bots. They were Russian bots, and and but I think I'm a Russian bot. <laughs> he is a Russian bot. I think, in fact, it's always been half of the f people yeah. on Twitter are fake. This I know half nothing. sounds like it's an improvement. That sounds low. <laughs> I, I think it's normally around one third. Actually, I, I, half is is very much on the high side. Huh. Um, it tends to range between twenty percent and forty percent. Half is is really on the high side for okay. a major account like that. But I don't think you blame. It's. I guess the the implication is that maybe Trump's team bought followers. But I think if you're the president of the United States, you probably get all the all the bots. Automatically, right? You just get all the bots. Yeah, someone yeah. once told me that half the hits are 
are bots? I, f- I feel like there are people with 70% bot followers. <laughs> I really do. Uh, there is a site. I don't know how they would figure out if you're bots, but there is a place you can do to audit your Twitter. Oh. Uh, and somebody ran me, and I think I'm 30% bot. That is not something I'm going to do. You don't want to know? No, I mean, I'm sure it's 90% for I, me. The uh, LinkedIn, I, I have, Why would for, a some reason, follow me? I have for some reason, I have 130,000 LinkedIn followers, and the, there's a way to see where they're from, and they were mostly from these little African countries. What's your uh, Twitter handle? Twitter? Yeah. He doesn't P, even know. P, What's your Twitter? P. Elmer DeWitt. Oh, there it is. It's on the screen. It's Philip E. D. No, know. that's oh, that's Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. That's Did you G- see G- the uh, self-driving people. trucks in Logan? They were amazing. I never saw them. Uh, <laughs> All right, I don't know. How, okay, my Twitter. eighty-one percent. You're very good. That's, all right, fine. Do me. You only have uh, two thousand seven hundred ninety-nine fake followers, according to Twitter. How right? many do I have total? Uh, you have it says twelve thousand one hundred seventy-one. All right. So, uh, Philip, what's your Phil Libin. Just P Libin. P L I B I N. Let's just yep. let's just run this. And you are ninety percent. You are wow. really good. Only 10. Real. Wow. Wow. And wow. How many, how many total? Okay, Mike. Twenty seven thousand. Wow. At Mike E L G A N. And you're eighty five okay, so I am uh, more human than all of you guys. So let's see. At real <laughs> Donald That is not what I would have expected. Trump. Uh, now this will take a while. See, forty-seven percent real. So maybe it is a story. Let me do uh, Leo Laporte. <laughs> I'll do this with some trepidation. Me and Donald. Yeah, you you're down there. Me and Donald. I'm only half real. Huh. I'm not a real boy. Hey, what's your total though? Uh, Two hundred and oh, see, this is uh, yeah, it's to- oh, you have to add those up. So it, yeah, it's close to six hundred thousand. I think. Wow, you are. Popular. Very well done. Well, no, I'm not because half of them are fake. But still, they're fake. still, they're just, they're just AIs. I'm you not, have, you not... appeal to a certain kind of artificial intelligence. <laughs> at, at something POTUS. to be proud what of. Is that POTUS? I'm 50% not interested. Also, see, I figure it's not. Yeah, he's Trump's in the millions, follower. though. Yeah. yeah, but the reason is because if you're at POTUS or at Real Donald Trump, every bot follows you. You, if you're running a Twitter bot. Yeah. You're going to follow those people, right? How does that work? Why would you do that? Why does it... I never understood that. Oh. Uh, who is, what's Taylor Swift's handle? Because she's like big, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Now no, I don't know what's going on. They, I think they want me now to sign up. So anyway, that's, we're, that we're done. Suspicious. All right. We're done. Oh, I'm, was... ni- I'm 90% human. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's more than by weight. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. At, yeah. T- at Taylor Swift 13. Oh, I didn't do her real, real handle. Okay. Uh, Supreme Court. Kind of, you know, this was a big decision that I didn't, I didn't think got a lot of coverage. The Lexmark case. So this was decided in the Supreme Court this week by an eight to nothing vote. The Supreme Court was hearing a case for, about a company that was makes reselling, taking Lexmark cartridges, refilling them. These are printer cartridges. Printer cartridges, inkjet cartridges. A company named Impression Products was refilling them. Lexmark sued, saying we have the patent on this and you can't refill them. The Supreme Court decided against Lexmark by eight to nothing. Actually, it ended up being revised because Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, well, okay, yeah, I agree, except it should be U.S. only. The eight nothing decision was originally U.S. and overseas. The point being that a patent and patent rights expire upon sale in other words if you buy something you own it this is huge this This is a big deal this is a big deal i was surprised to get more coverage maybe because it seems so technical but i think it's got the word lexmark in it (laughs) It so where else does it apply (laughs) that it becomes well i think it has a lot to do with the right to repair movement right because apple for instance would very much like you to have to buy repairs and parts from apple Right. That's why they used weird screws. Right. Uh, this would, I would think, could be used to defend people who say, no, no, you, you own that phone. Is it going to hold up when we actually have, like, fully self-aware robots that we can buy? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, you ask a really interesting question. Uh, maybe we should just wait and ask the self-aware robots. We should. Uh, yeah. We should wait until they're on the Supreme Court. When they're on the Supreme Court. <laughs> you know, I think it's time. By the way, I just want, I want a robot rights. 
it's time we got a self-aware robot on the Supreme Court. Absolutely. The government jobs, forget the truckers. It's the government jobs that should be the first to go. Oh, I think you're right. If you've ever been to DMV lately, oh, boy. What do you think of... Yeah, it's uh, things that humans aren't good at, like yeah, politics. Like politics. <laughs> yeah, like making arbitrary decisions. Our that, robot overlords. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, who is it? Bill Gates says they should... The robot makers should be taxed for the jobs that they Yeah, that's nuts. Eliminate. He says robots should be taxed. That's robots. No. The robot maker. No, well, the, robots the robots themselves. Well, the whole gonna... thing is nuts. It's crazy. The, the tax situation is all upside down. You yeah. should tax consumption, not production. You should tax things you don't want, not things you do want. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What, would, what would be the thing I don't want? We well, should tax things that, like, like when liquor. you tax something, it, like, it reduces it. The, it so you should put taxes on things that you want fewer vice, of. Vice taxes. Well, numbers. whatever. Yeah. No, uh, not that you want This more isn't of. really the show to debate uh, taxation, but yes. speaking of Bill Gates. Also, I don't know much about it. Oh, yeah, God, this was too long. Couldn't read. I tried oh, this one. Oh, I will summarize because it's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, I tried is, to read it. This is from Hacker Noon. This is a guy named Terry Crowley who worked on the Office Division, wrote an article on where Microsoft took a wrong turn in yeah. the 90s. yeah. And it really was Longhorn. And Bill Gates decided, and this is the fascinating thing in here, at some point, Bill Gates decided that HTML and the rich web had no future, that in fact, Windows presentation layer, Avalon, was the future of middleware. Yeah. And spent untold amounts of developer time and effort on building up Avalon and Vista and in deprecating the browser. In fact, most of the Internet Explorer team was moved off IE and over to Avalon. Uh, I remember that. A sp kind of a spectacular misunderstanding of what the future would be. But it yes. was so Microsoft. I mean, it's just that's the way they saw yeah. things. The whole history of Microsoft, he writes, from its origin is about the primacy of software over hardware. Hardware is a commodity. Value lies in software. Uh, it's, and it's actually, I think, the, the the supremacy of the buyer versus the user. I, if that's actually, it's interesting you should say that, because which uh, is like the opposite of what Apple. Like Apple's always been about the person using it, not necessarily the person buying it. Although in Apple's case, it's mostly the same person. Microsoft has been about the buyer, not the user. Right, the buyer, not the user. What are yeah. they different? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. in Microsoft's case, it's always like corporations CIO or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. The orifice. Is the other Jackson thing I found fascinating, the reason I found this article is because the guy who took over after the debacle that was Vista, Stephen Sanofsky, who Great created guy. the Windows 7 team, big fan of Stephen Sanofsky, heavily annotated this uh, and recommended this article. Yeah. And so there's a second story going on as you read the article because you're what you're seeing really is Sanofsky is no longer at Microsoft. He can kind of speak his mind. So they're and like Andreessen Horowitz now. Yeah. Yeah. He there is, yeah. as you go along there's underlinings. Uh, oh. that's one of the things I like about Medium. You can see what other people have picked out. I'm not seeing them right now maybe because I have an ad blocker yeah. on, but uh there's underlines, and so you can see yeah, what yeah. Sanofsky yeah. says is really the issue here. And it, and in, in a way, the second story is the successor at Microsoft, Stephen Sanofsky, and what he really thinks. <laughs> but he did it all with underlining. Anyway, it's worth reading. It's uh, on HackerNoon.com, which is a, a medium. I wrote a note to Steve Ballmer at the time. Uh, when they when they first announced Vista, because you because Evernote was a big Windows product, right? Yeah, Maybe. well, still are. Yeah, but everyone went to Balmer at the time, uh, saying that I see where they were going with the name, because you know Vista, is sort of a Windowsy name, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I thought it was a missed opportunity. They, if it was me, I would have gone yeah. with uh, Windows Pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been, yeah, sounds uh, like would have been better. So Sanofsky might say. That's... I never heard back from, from Balmer <laughs> on, that, on that note. <laughs> Uh, well, what, what's happened, of course, is that the operating system now is really no longer important at all. It is, in fact, the presentation layer, and the and the winner was the web, and that's why you could do something like Chrome OS, the which really doesn't still, even care about the operating, operating system. Operating system is pretty important. It's about to get a lot more important. The platform. Well, is what here, here's right now. okay. So here's my contention: the platform is the browser and the web. I don't care. And then one of the reasons I'm using Windows now is I don't care if I'm on Mac OS, Windows, or Chrome OS because most of what I do is in a browser, right? right? You disagree with until that? until you get hit by WannaCry or something like that, it's, and then that won't. Yeah, cry, and it's different on you know, it's different it's on mobile. Interest. Is next, it different on mobile? Well, yeah. we haven't had the right operating system for uh, AI yet, and I think that's coming. Oh boy, let's take a break uh, and talk about that. We're almost done. Operating system for AI. Isn't that <clears> Lisp? Mm, what does that mean? Yeah, I'm I'm learning Lisp. 
I'm about I used half, to, halfway, I used to lift. <laughs> I'm halfway through SICP. I'm ready. I'll be ready for you when you need me. Just I'll call me. I'll come in. I, I learned, can fix the 2038 problem. Nope. No I, problem. I learned lisp um, from uh, Paul Graham's book. Did you really? Yeah, great book. Yeah. and yeah. Uh, on, li on lisp. On lisp, yeah. And then it, it took me like 20 years to realize that it's the same Paul Graham. <laughs> And, it, and I got him to sign it. I He's amazing. I copy and I got him to sign it. So it's like all his books are made. hackers one and of artists. My, He's, one um, of my prized possessions. I'm. I. That's a smart guy. Super smart guy. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by my my shave <laughs> by Harry's, a great shave for a lot less than you're paying. About half what you're paying. Father's Day is just around the corner. Ooh, this Harry's would be a great Father's Day gift. I gave it to my son for graduation. Oh no, for Christmas. He and he loved it. I have to say, Harry's knows that dads are tough to shop for. Do not give dad a tie. <coughs> Unless Tad has a big bushy beard that goes all the way down to his chest and never uses a razor, you might want to take a look at Harry's. Actually, get one for yourself and then give one to dad and the grads. Harry's is all about a great shave at a fair price. They bought the factory in Germany. This is a great startup story. Harry's founders got a little money. You know, probably from somebody like you, Phil, an angel investor. That's why and there's said, an elephant on the how, package. How do we disrupt? Is there really? Yeah, right. Oh, is that because of you? No. Oh, but <laughs> it's actually a mastodon. It's, it's a so mammoth, it's okay. yeah. Yeah, it's a mammoth. Yeah, it's a mammoth. It's a woolly mammoth. Yeah. But they things, don't want you to be a woolly mammoth. Products with elephants on them are better than products without <laughs> elephants on them. So they got a little money and they said, how do we disrupt the shaving industry? It's really clear that the, the it's, in fact, it's even an adage. The model is you give away the razor and you make it up on the blade and these blades are way overpriced. They realized the best thing we could do is buy the factory in Germany that makes the blades and sell it direct. So that's what you get. You get amazing, well-made blades designed to, to work great, give you a close, comfortable shave, and you get it for about half the price of those blades in the drugstore. Actually, I shouldn't say that anymore because you can actually find Harry. There's, there they are, Jeff and Andy. You can actually find Harry's uh, in the drugstore now, which I was really pleased to see, but you still get that great price. Uh, the Harry's uh, kit... We'll get you started with the razor handle, the uh, moisturizing shave gel, three of Harry's five-blade precision-engineered razors. Uh, they have a limited edition Father's Day shave kit. I don't, ha I don't think I have that here. Maybe I do. If, show it on the, uh, yeah, no, this is the orange one. This is the beautiful, it's beautiful. It's a storm gray razor handle. Plus, you get the chrome razor stand. You get the foaming shave gel, three replacement blades, the travel cover, which I will use tomorrow, and I use all the time it's it's you know it's really a great idea to keep yourself from getting cut when you reach in your shaving kit to get your blade i love it plus it comes in a sleek giftable box you can even add custom engraze, engraving in a personalized card for free this is a nice gift and right now get five dollars off uh actually any shave set at harrys.com slash twit sean parker's back you know he has a plan to let you rent movies that are still in theaters for uh, 50 bucks. I, I support this. This is great. Would you do... I guess so, because it's, it's like $13 to see a movie. Yeah, well, I mean, if you have someone over... Like, I'm yeah. I'm actually really angry that, that you still have to go to movies first. And the whole, like, movie distribution thing, like, it pisses me off. He created Napster. Uh, music industry didn't like that too much. Uh, and but his new his new thing in the Hollywood doesn't like it too much again oh. is uh, Premium Video On Demand. His new acronym, PVOD. Uh, and, uh, so how does it work? That's a winner. Pivot. Well, the company's called Screening Room. So uh, you rent the movie instead of the inexpensive, you know, $4 for a movie that's been out and out of the theaters and, you know, months later. Uh, you, you rent it for 48 hours for 50 bucks. Yeah. 20% goes to the movie's distributor. A theater chain, I guess they, they're going to work with theater chains, would get up to 20 bucks. Each customer would get two tickets to see that title at the theater. Screening room takes 10%. Yeah, I think it's great. There's basically nothing... I love this idea. There's no upside to, like, sitting in a dark room with random people that you didn't choose to be with. You probably have a nice home theater, too. I used to. Screen. Not anymore. I there's, used to. There's the smell of popcorn. That, that's that's what you should. Plus, I don't... What's eat. happening What's happening in, uh, in Fez? Sounds like a, a new party has started. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's lost control of the mic. This is Fez. <laughs> uh, I love this one. I Eating. use de Delicious. Remember Delicious? Joshua Schachter's yeah, uh, yeah, great yeah, bookmarking yeah. site got bought by Yahoo. Yahoo managed to kill it pretty good. Mm. Uh, then the guys 
who started uh, YouTube bought it, weirdly enough. Then they didn't want it, so they, <laughs> they sold. It's been sold five times. Wow. Yeah. Five times. Uh, the YouTube founders bought it in 2011. They sold it to Science Incorporated in 2014. Science sold it to Delicious, Delicious Media in 2016. And now, during this whole process, when Delicious was bought by Yahoo, I went, I moved to Pinboard because this the guy who does Pinboard had this great model. You, the, If you get in early, you pay less. And as more people use it, his server costs go up, you pay more. Uh, I've been very happy. It's costing like $12. <laughs> He must be doing all right because he just bought Delicious. There you go. <laughs> Machej, I don't know uh, what you plan to do with Delicious. He doesn't really need it. He's duplicated the Delicious API. It's, uh, it's completely compatible with Delicious. But Apparently, it's such a cool service. It is great. Apparently, yeah. all your bookmarks, if you use Delicious, are still there. Yep. They didn't delete anything. So yep. maybe there'll be some future uh, for Delicious. Speaking of Delicious. So we actually considered buying it we talked to them did you really we did yeah at Evernote like so years ago yeah would have been a great buy would have been yeah um yeah, came very close hmm. just didn't 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 work I use out, pinboard but, but, yeah. all of this all of this stuff is in pinboard and then I use Zapier to automatically put it into a spreadsheet mm -hmm. um so that you we know, have the run you know what's funny though I mean delicious looms large in all of our minds because it at some point it was the flavor of the month and it was the right. new hotness and all that stuff you know, you're looking at like you know 2008 or something like that. It only acquired like 5.3 million users. Yeah. Hmm. Compare that to Facebook yeah. or any, any social anything nowadays. That I mean, it's, it's amazing how tiny it was compared to how big we remember it. You know. And I think we remember it because we were tech well, journalists. Right. Maybe we were doing stuff. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up. I need to. I need to wrap it up too. Okay. I think it's time to have a uh, little quiet thank you for our fabulous hosts, uh, Mike Elgin visiting us from Morocco. Wow, that was cool. Find out more about Mike and Amira and what they're up to at gastronomad.net and read his great writings in Computer World. I didn't even get to your fabulous article, which I talked about on the radio show uh, about why businesses should prepare for a laptop ban. Not that. It's imminent, but when it happens, it will happen because there was an incident, yeah. and it'll happen like that, and all of a sudden, you won't be able to carry laptops on an airplane. It'll be like sneaker bomb. It'll be a huge deal. And, yeah. and yeah. so, Mike, well... And it, one of the reasons it'll be huge is because you probably won't be able to put it in checked luggage either. Yeah, because yeah. that's even more dangerous. That's da the thing that That's dangerous, too. It's very dangerous. There was a yep. big... There was a fire uh, in a, a, a lithium-ion batteries burst into flame but fortunately they were on in the cabin where they could be dealt with had it been in the hold it might have been a whole nother matter yeah you need you need there cloud services and airport laptop rentals yeah exactly but there were 33 fires from devices last year in the united states alone that were reported uh and and so imagine if half of those had had ignited in the hold where yeah where crews couldn't put it out with a fire extinguisher. Read Mike's piece is really good in computer world, especially if you are a business uh, and you do a lot of business travel. You, this is something you need to prepare, prepare for. No question. Phil Lemon, good luck. I'm so excited you were here the day before your new company, all-turtles.com. My, my last opens. few hours of not having real responsibility, so I'm pleased to have shared it with you. You have to report to the office at 9 tomorrow morning? I do. I do. i got to be there at 9. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got to talk about fasting sometime, but not today, because mm. I got to run. Because I got a plane to catch. I got to get out of here. But uh, thank you so much for being. Here. Thank you for asking you me back. Look great, and you come back anytime. Thank you. And I extend exactly the same offer to you, Philip Elmer Dewitt. Always nice to see you. Have fun tomorrow. Oh, How early are you going to get in line? Well, I don't have to get in line because I have a press pass. Ooh, I've heard about that. But um, but the line is where you like get all the best info. I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> We're from the developers. I don't know. Nobody knows nothing. But uh, I, I'll have to work. I have to type, you know, while it's happening. We'll watch with great interest. Uh, we'll, we'll follow your blog at ped30.com. And, of course, we'll have our own streaming coverage tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 1700 UTC. You know, I'm, I'm always rooting for Apple. I want them to be the Apple of, of your. I just fear that there's not, that they don't have what it takes to become the Apple of your. I, I think... I. I have to believe either they will deliver at some point, yeah, things that will wow you, yeah, or 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 it ain't gonna happen. They're just gonna ride the phone into 
into yeah. the sunset. Well, we've seen that happen before with sure. Apple. It, we've seen it happen with many companies. It's kind of yeah. the way it is. What's amazing with Apple is that they they've come came back. back. Yeah, yeah, they had a they had a second yeah. act. Thank you for joining us. We do This Week in Tech every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. I won't be here for the next two weeks. Good news. Great co-hosts. We let them put together their own show. show. It's always interesting. Jason Snell next week. Jason Calacanis the week after. It should be a lot of fun, and I'll be back in three weeks. Uh, and, in fact, I'll be back on June uh, 18th or 19th, I guess, to do all the shows uh, as usual. So I hope you'll join me then, and I hope you watch uh, next week. You can always get the shows on demand at twit.tv or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. Do subscribe. We want you to get every single episode. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Another twit. This is amazing. Doing the twit. Doing the twit.